town of Bay Harbor Islands, November town council meeting to order. We are going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a special guest who's going to recite for us. Right, right up there, there's going to be a microphone. Awesome. Turn it on. There you go. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job. Very good job. That's fabulous, baby. Hold on, honey. Oh, hold on, hold on. Say a little bit about All right, there we go. There we go. All right. Rowan Albernetti, right? Albertini. Albertini, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just know you the role. So, eight year old student attends the third grade at Roof K Broad K through 8 Center. You're a proud member of the Gardening Club and the Gifted Program. And on your spare time, you enjoy a great basketball game with friends and playing the piano. Now, I also know that you also ride the bike because I've seen you ride the bike across the street, which is yeah. awesome. So that's definitely cool. And as a small token of our appreciation, I want to give you this certificate of appreciation for reciting the pledge. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are you at Bay Harbor? Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. We're going to take a picture. Oh, where are you going to go? Wherever you want to go. There you go. There you go. Good. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Okay, on three, one, two, three, one more, and three. Very so much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy gobble gobble. All right, roll call, please. Oh, Councilmember Yaffe. Here. Councilmember Chicoche. Not here. Councilmember Sauber? Here. Councilmember Reed? Here. Councilmember Fuller? Here. Vice Mayor Bruder? Here. Mayor Leonard? Here. You have a question? <coughs> All right. Just, um, we know that uh, Councilmember Tricoche is not here. Uh, she uh, unfortunately had a friend that, that passed away recently, so she won't be here tonight. Um, we have requests for withdrawals, deferments, and future agenda items. Anyone? I will mention a few. Um, pending items that we're looking forward to seeing come back again. Uh, one of them is uh, addressing the code on lighting for the building. Some of them are very bright. And uh, Marlene, I think you were working on that. Is the new code director taking that over now? No. No? Uh, that's something that it's a planner. The planner? Yeah. Um, OK. We were going to look at it. I don't think that we have anything specific to the ground floor. That was the issue. Okay, and also we were looking at uh, noise from the generators. Mm -hmm. So that's still pending. I'd love to see something on that soon. Mm -hmm. And then a new thing that I would like to discuss is the uh, underground parking in the uh, new construction buildings. You know, several of the newer buildings had floods after Irma. And I'd, you know, like to hear a little bit about that because I think it's, uh, it's a hazard and it's almost a consumer protection item for uh, new owners. All right. Anyone else? All right. Hearing none, I would like to bring up in January in regards to um, workforce housing. Um, a lot of residents have mentioned this, that obviously Bay Harbor, because it is a great town, um, one of the, uh, I guess the downside is, is for some people that are longtime residents that um, they may feel that they might be necessarily priced out or whatnot. Um, I have talked to the planner over the last month or so about the possibility of um, having an ordinance pertaining to this, and I'd like to have that be an item in January. So I just want to, if you know, assuming there's no disagreement with that. All right, we're going to move over. We can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. Just January, I will be bringing up an ordinance pertaining to uh, workforce housing. Uh, town manager's report, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dan Bray is from Mellon Wealth Management. He's going to give his report. Mayor Leonard, before we continue, yeah. I think uh, items number... Yeah, which items are we going to defer? 13 and... Um, 18. 18 have been uh, taken off the agenda. 13 and 18? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. 
All right, but 13 is being deferred, correct? It will be brought back. At okay, 13 is going to come back probably in January. All right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Dan Brea from BNY Mellon Wealth Management to report results through September 30th of 2017. The average current yields of, of the town's portfolios is 2.32%. Uh, the index is 2.42%. The average yield to maturity or yield to call for the town's portfolios is 1.94%. The benchmark is 2.10. And the duration for the town's portfolios is 3.69 years. Uh, the benchmark is at 4.05 years. Uh, year to date, uh, the contingency fund is up 2.11%. The general fund is up 2.07%. And the water fund is up 2.09%. Benchmark is up 2.34. Annualized since inception, the contingency fund is up 4.50. The general fund up 4.53. And the water fund is up 4.66. Benchmark is 4.73. At this point, I'll take any questions. Any questions? All right, great. Hearing none, thank you so much, Dan. Thank, thank you. you, have a nice evening. Have a happy holidays. Likewise. All right. Next, Mr. Manager. Mayor, uh, Dave uh, Caserta is on his way. He said the traffic was very bad unless he, he's in the room right now. I I'm going to go right to uh, discussion on concrete poles. Great. What well, we'll do is we'll bring him up when, sure, as soon as when he comes up. Yeah. Great. Before I start that, I know you when you when you have your reports, you're probably all going to mention uh, Veterans Day. I just was a little remiss that day not to thank one of the people who really helped put that together. It was Bridget in the back of the yeah, room. Well. She almost managed to knock her. It was a, it was a nice event, nicely attended, and uh, she almost knocked herself out uh, putting together the sound system. But she really handles everything, and she did a great job. Thanks, Bridget. Um, we had a meeting with Florida Power and Light to discuss the possibility of putting concrete poles in the rear yards. Um, the engineers came with their uh, with the area representative. The engineers right now, we're fit, quick to explain that right now that the policy of Florida Power and Light is not to put concrete in the rear yards for the simple reason they can't, they can't climb the poles with the, with the, um, the, the, uh, the spikes, they call them spikes or climbers. Um, so I did some research myself and found that the poles that can be manufactured with climbing pegs or climbing ladders. We discussed it. The engineers really aren't, aren't against the idea. He says it's really a policy thing. Um, we discussed possibly a pilot program where they could, you know, st you know try it someplace. And uh, they said they would, be, they would be more than willing to discuss that and put it forward after they looked, looked at it a little further. Secondly, once, it's, once they make that decision and make that request, it would have to be passed through a couple of committees. One of them is the, the linemen who discuss all things with the poles, climbing them, and how they work on the lines. So it's, if it passes muster with them as far as safety, then, then there is a possibility that it could, they could consider it. Um, the cost, again, it would be similar to what we did on the perimeter road when we replaced all the wood poles with concrete. There really was no downside. The idea was you know, for, for their point of view, they're, they're durable, they're, weather, they're more weatherproof. Um, it would be beneficial to them not to have to hassle on the rear, rear, rear yards with replacing poles because the, uh, they stand up much, much greater uh, and longer. Um, and they pretty much would hang wire just as they do now. Someone has to go up. If they have to put a transformer up, they get in the backyard and they basically hoist it up So with, uh, with block and tackle. Um, we did say that we would meet because there's been some turnover at their, at their, uh, in their organization. We're going to look to meet with them about vegetation. I know there's some things coming up uh, to change the code requiring, requiring, you know, how we're going to look at making sure that people do cut and trim their yards when it comes to underneath the power lines. Um, but it's we want to meet with them again and, and see what. Again, we can do to, to have them or assist them to make sure that when something has to be chopped down, it gets chopped down. The catch-22 is always, once it gets too close to the power line, it can't be touched by somebody who doesn't have, has to have the, that qualification. 
And often if you, you don't do it, they're, the FPL is a little reluctant to go into someone's backyard who says you can't come in my backyard. So let me so. ask you, in, eight, uh, <coughs> sorry. in April, right, right when you know, the vegetation and everything else um, is going, um, why can't we, if we, you know, we can look up and see that a lot of these trees, I mean, I can look around my na own neighborhood in my own yard, which I already know I have to cut back. I know we need, you know, we need to cut back. If we could have maybe the people within our town in April start to tell them, and then we can go back in May, and if they, by that time, if it's too high already and it's into the wires, let's tell, you know, FPNL in May, giving them plenty of time before the hurricane season really hits us so that when the hurricane is actually upon us, maybe we have a better chance of not having as much damage as... I would agree. The, some of the palm trees, even if we prevent people from, you know, you, with a lot of the new construction, we're not allowing that kind of planting to go on. But nothing stops somebody from putting a baby palm tree in when nobody's looking in the backyard. And lo and behold, a couple of years later, it's 25 feet tall. So it is difficult. Marlene can certainly speak to code. He's not allowed to go in. Um, I'd, love, I'd love to be able to use a drone, but we're not allowed to. <laughs> so uh, make it a lot easier. And it becomes, you know, from the street, it's very hard to tell whose backyard a tree is right. in until you're in the backyard. And unless you have a cooperative neighbor that's tired of the power going out, who normally gladly invites us in and says, that's the tree, and then we have a little more to go at. Right, that's, I would say that's the key. If it's, you have to check your own backyard and your own property, but also if you see your neighbors going a little high, hopefully everyone is able to communicate with their neighbor to ask them as well to keep the trim down, or at least maybe they'll talk to us as well. Because the problem we had last time was it only took one person who let their trees grow a little bit longer. They got up to the court, up to the wires, knocked the wires down, and knocked out the power. Yeah, yeah. it's always good. It's it's your it's the weakest link. You know, you could have everybody do everything right. You just only need one. one person. Right. Yeah. Ron, I'm sorry. Um, a couple of weeks ago, FPL sent in crews along um, the perimeter streets, at least on the West Island. I, I don't know if they were on the East Island as well, and they cut back a lot of the royal palms. You know, um, pretty well to keep them out of the. Right, to keep them out of the power lines. They did leave a hang tag on somewhere in my property, and I had mentioned that to you, JC, but um, it wasn't clear to me whether they planned to come back and go into rear yards or whether, you know, they, ex and I have no problem calling, um, or whether they were asking yeah. the individual, you know, property owners to call them to come back and whether I'm not sure, I'll find out. Back. So I was just curious about that. <clears throat> it's my, my bad. I no, no, it's fine. I just, but I thought maybe if you find out some additional information, we could put that in the, um, in one of the town's newsletters and on the website contact information so that if you yes. are concerned about you know trees and overgrown foliage in your own backyard or on your own property there's right. a contact number to invite FPL in to do some trimming it's okay they're really they're very sensitive to public public uh, comment or public you know what people say about them they have the right to do it but they often don't exercise it right, right. but if if we're telling our residents who to call so that they can have yes, them come absolutely. in because if FPL was only concentrating on the perimeter, which I understand because yeah. some of those ro large royal ponds have knocked out power repeatedly. Yes. So I'm glad they trimmed them, but I'd like them to do more. Um, so. One thing that did come of the hurricane when they were reviewing, um, especially on the East Island, they're removing, I'm sorry, they're, uh, they found that a lot of the laterals that service the interior lots were overstressed, particularly here where you would have one lateral that was serving three streets. So they're splitting those off now. So similar to the water system where you put extra valves in to, to isolate a section, that'll be occurring. It's gonna take about five months to do, but they're gonna be really trying to narrow it down when, it, when, it, when you do have a problem. It'll knock out less, less, um, less homes or less uh, accounts. The under, I don't know if you noticed, the underground, not the under, well, the undergrounding between the East and West Island that's that's uh, operational now, and they just started to take down the gear overhead. They topped the poles, um, but part of that whole updating was to really they're servicing the town now with two two ways that we're getting electric from uh, two 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 separate circuits. So we don't in the past if Miami if Miami Beach went out or the feeder from the beach went out, it used to take everybody. Now we get the power from both ways, and it's a redundancy that they built in part of that project. So um, that, that was a positive thing. And um, they're putting in more automatic switches. So if a palm frond does come down and hits the wire and, knock, and does a short 
they can it'll automatically come back and re restart itself. The palm from stays there. It's not gonna. It won't close. But these are just some of the things they're doing now. Will these updates be completed by before the next hurricane season? February. February. That's what they're telling you. Yeah. February. Can we in like do you remember years past we used to have hurricane preparedness committee and we used to have that little booklet that told us all the things of what to do. The disaster preparedness. Is that right? right. Yeah. I think that maybe we should have in either July. You know, like a check, almost like a checklist for everybody. You know, get your batteries, get your water, you know, check. Like, if we could put that into the newsletter, like, uh, just as a removable piece so that people can stick it on their refrigerators to get themselves I find, ready. I find that the postcard mailers are very effective because yeah. they don't get them regularly when they come. They tend to read them. So we could do that Whatever too. Whatever way yeah. you want to do right. it so that we can, you know, get our citizens ready in case we have another hurricane. All right, great. All right, we're going to move on to the council reports. We'll start on the end. Josh? Okay, I'll try and keep it quick because we have a long meeting tonight. Um, first of all, happy holidays to everybody as we enter into the holiday season. Um, I was, over the last month, I was over at the farmer's market a couple times. First of all, anybody who has not visited it, it has been wonderful. It is growing. Please visit it. It has become a nice success, and it's right off of King Concourse now, right in front here on uh, Bay Harbor Terrace. Uh, the Veterans Day event was fantastic. Bridget, thank you. Ron, thank you. Everyone, thank you. And thank you to our veterans. Um, we had a good turnout, and it was really a nice event. Can't hear you, Josh. I apologize there. Sorry, I'm getting old. I'm getting uh, pizza with the cops was, again, and this was, Kathleen, this was your, your baby, so it worked out nicely. But uh, the pizza with the cops was a nice event. I encourage everybody to keep on coming out. We really need more and more people to come out and take advantage of this event. We do this regularly. Kathleen, I'm sure, will tell everybody about it every time. Um, but make sure you come out. It is a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about security in Bay Harbor and to meet your officers. Uh, and finally, I attended the Miami-Dade County League of Cities uh, um, Board of Directors meeting. And again, wish everybody happy holidays. Great. Thanks, Bob. I wish you all a happy, happy holidays as well. Um, I was at the Miami-Dade League of Cities meeting uh, earlier this month, Bay Harbor was one of the sponsors. Uh, this month, we get the opportunity to do that, um, you know, once a year, and you know, talk to all of our fellow elected uh, officials in the county about how great Bay Harbor Islands is, and some of our neighboring communities as well. So that was a great event. Thank you all, you know, to the town administration, Bridget, Ron, Eileen, everybody for putting on the Veterans Day uh, ceremonial event on um, this past weekend. I thank all of the veterans who came out and run. I, I appreciate your recognizing all of our town employees uh, who are veterans not only in the United States, but who have served in military elsewhere. Um, as Josh said, the farmer's market uh, has been much improved this year, particularly you know now that it's out on Cane Concourse and in front of Town Hall. It's a great event, so those of you who haven't had the opportunity to come out, uh, please do so. Um, you'll see some activity on Cane Concourse. There's a couple of new businesses that are getting ready to open Looking forward to that. Chocolate shop down the street and uh, some other businesses. So um, look forward to that. Uh, start looking at a lot of our businesses as the holiday season is coming up and hopefully, you know, frequenting and shopping in some of our businesses on Cane Concourse. Thank you. Great. Stephanie. Also, I want to wish everybody happy holidays. I want to let you know as well the chocolatier should be open hopefully by December. We also have a new Pilates. Um, That's right. After the chocolate. After the chocolate <laughs> or before the chocolate. You know, it's the holiday seasons, but we have a new Pilates studio in town. Um, and they're running a special at the moment, so please um, take advantage of the special that's running. And, you know, um, the Bay Harbor Drugs also has beautiful gifts for teachers or for anybody that you need. We really, you know, would love to have you guys, everybody support the uh, merchants within the town, you know, buy gift certificates or actually go in there. You'd be surprised of all the wonderful things that you can find within the town. Um, that's it. Thank you. Great. Kelly? Uh, since the last meeting, I too attended the uh, monthly League of Cities meeting and the Pizza with the Police and the Veterans event. And uh, they're all great events for us to network and learn. And uh, I also am uh, one of two council members. Council Member Salva and myself serve on the pension board along with three employee members. And uh, I'm the newest member. I've only been on plus or minus a year. But our consultant made a statement that should make everyone very happy. And he said that out of the 24 plans that he administers, 
we were the only one to beat the actuarial assumption which means that due to not my doing but my colleagues and mr short our finance director many many years of disciplined conservative portfolio management so you should be very happy to know that out of these twenty four plans that bay harbor is setting the benchmark for others so that made me feel very good great Isaac. very good yes. um, yeah, I echo the sentiments of my colleagues about the events that have taken place um, here in Bay Harbor Islands. I got to attend briefly the uh, League of Cities and uh, pizza with the uh, police was very, very good. Um, just to mention something that took place there, there were, you know, we had a, a little group of teenagers there, which was um, uh, very uh, enlightening and, and very, um, I guess, heartwarming to see them come to an event like that. Um, they participated and uh, they shared experiences with us and I, I know that I definitely learned something and, uh, from, from what they had to add and I enjoyed spending time with the, with the police, um, both the leadership and the rank and file guys. Um, this week I'm fortunate um, from November 15th through November 18th I get to represent the Florida League of Cities at the National League of Cities City Summit in Charlotte, North Carolina, which um, runs from the November 15th to the 18th. It's the first time um, I think somebody from Bay Harbor is actually going to that, and I'm going, you know, representing the Florida League as the second, as the second vice president. Um, I get to attend this conference. Um, since I'm representing the Florida League of Cities, I get to attend the conference at no uh, charge to taxpayers. It's fully underwritten by the Florida League of Cities. Uh, and I look forward to bringing you back a report about uh, the, the experiences and the classes and the seminars that, uh, that are going to take place there. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll make, we'll make you guys proud. Thank you. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, also attended the Veterans Day event. I thought that was, um, it's actually one, one of the I think one of the best events we do every year. Um, also attended the last League of Cities meeting, of which I had the pleasure of presiding over. Um, it's also interesting to mention that the, the main topic that we discussed was actually um, FPNL and concrete poles. So um, it's it's very uh, noteworthy that um, your council's attending events and learning about things that we're discussing later on. So it, it does serve a purpose. Um, next, I believe it's next month, I'll be attending the Florida League of Cities um, meeting. I just wanted to let my colleagues know. Um, I believe you'll, you'll be attending too, Isaac, I'm sure. So because um, we're both on the Florida board. Um, that being said, uh, happy holidays to everyone, and hopefully we'll get done with the meeting promptly. Uh, we have next uh, public comment, and we're going to start with... We have John Vetter. And for those of you who don't know, um, public comment is any discussion item that is not on the agenda. You get three minutes for specific items on the agenda. You speak during that item, and you have two minutes. That's okay. We'll share. We're close. That's fine. You need one. No problem. No. Yeah. That's right. Do you want to yeah. share? Sure. I'll share with staff. Uh, John Vetter, 10350 West Bay Harbor Drive, uh, Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, 33154. <coughs> this is my first time being here since Irma, and I wanted to thank everybody for when we came back after it was over, it was like nothing happened. Uh, I'd also like to thank the police for going around with their bullhorn, telling everybody to evacuate. We evacuated. Um, some of our neighbors did, and we saw brown water come out of their exhaust pipes. Okay. So I have a, I know there's a long agenda tonight. My agenda is long because it's, it's based on walking around. And the first picture is Sereno from my bedroom window. Um, I've raised this a number of times. I keep being told that they're going to lower their lights. 
but nothing more specific than that. I ask who's been held responsible for this because the, the town approved it and I get no answer. Um, the code remains the same. Those are the next two pages. Crosswalk I'm having a really tough time with lately. Uh, I have chronic vertigo and uh, so this particular event uh, instance, I walk up to the crosswalk, I, I push the button, I wait for the walk sign. It turns green, I walk. All of a sudden, cars are coming at me. And I'm like, shit, excuse me. Um, but I got an adrenaline burst like you can't believe. And when I cross the street, I look, the police are directing the cars at me. And I'm like, what the H? Um, the, after the two police pictures, there's like a Porsche Cayenne. Again, the same thing. I push the walk button. I step in. I go, ole. His window's down. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, I have to make a right turn. I'm like, I have a green walk sign. Um, next picture is of cars on the crosswalk with guys trying to cross. Uh, sometimes when I take their pictures of them in the crosswalks, they get mad at me. I asked them if they'd like to go over here and talk it over with the police station. It's right here, and they always refuse. Um, this light at West Bay Harbor and King Concourse, you, you can't even see it. You can't hardly tell that there's a light there or not. At West Bay Harbor, the, this building construction project has covered up the walk sign, the button, and I can't even get my hand in there to push it because it's on the other side of their construction fence, and I don't know how uh, a company gets to take a private property. Um, it goes on and on, but it's pretty self-explanatory with the pictures, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Vetter, my just, few minutes. Yeah, even though your time is up, I strongly recommend that, that why don't we take one of these and our code compliance director and our chief of police are here. Maybe you should have them take a look at it and address all these issues one by one because obviously you yeah, can't, you can yeah, well, and that, I think that would be appropriate and let let our day-to-day -day staff handle those issues individually. You can have, I can have that. Okay? Yeah, I can have that. All right. And let me, let me add one thing, Ron, just one thing, just, if you can just follow up, a special emphasis on everything, it's, it's a lot of photos here of uh, companies parking on the uh, bike path like that. and everything else. Yeah. That's okay. something we have to make sure we're yeah. stopping immediately. So they can they can deal with that. All right. Thank, Thank you so much for your comments, Mr. Vetter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vetter. Next is Kathleen Kenny. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kathleen Kennedy at 9180 West Bay Harbor Drive. I'm here to give compliments. I want to thank Josh, Bob, Jordan, and anyone that, oh, uh, Stephanie, for listening to me over the weekend. We're not going to talk about it tonight because there's an issue coming up tonight that's very dear to me. But first of all, I want to thank the great job that the, was done for veterans. Patrick, you got a sunburn. You did an amazing job. Sean, Ron, the staff, Bridget, amazing. Hopefully, as the mother of a colonel, West Point graduate, Next year, I sat with a chief today, we can do some things with real soldiers jumping out of trucks or whatever and make something nice. I've tried to do it before, but can, uh, for some reason it doesn't happen. It'd be nice to see soldiers parading down our streets and talking to our children. Okay, my daughter wanted to do it one time, but communication broke down. So, you know, let's do it. She has gone to the school. She has done mentoring in with Dr. with the, um, what's her name? Oh, shame on me, Dr. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. And now um, she's going to meet with, uh, with Mr. Saperstein. And um, this is what we need, mentoring chip with our kids. So hopefully next Veterans Day, we'll have them big old green trucks out there and we'll make this town the best town it's ever been, which it is now. But thank you, thank you, thank you for reaching out. And I know sometimes my phone calls are not always the greatest, but I have a lot of respect 
for anyone that returns a citizen's phone call. Okay? There's, a, there's somebody here, somebody that's not here, but I'm not going to say anything, but I'm a little disappointed. But thank you, and um, happy Thanksgiving. I'm out of town, so it's going to be peaceful. The flowers are beautiful on the Cane Concourse. Ron Watson, you have done one amazing job. I can't wait to see the Christmas lights. It's beautiful. I'm so proud of this town. You have no idea. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Comments. All right. Next, we have Francis Newhart. What was that? There we go. Francis Newhart, 1060 okay. Kane Concourse. Okay. Since council has not allowed public discussion on either planning and zoning board church by the seaside plan approval, nor alleged affiliation with the BBS movement. The following time frame may possibly link Bell Harbor Shop's 200 million expansion and our small town being destroyed, our restaurants and retail. Um, March 2004, Bell Harbor Church by the Sea acquired Bay Harbor Islands Church by the Sea at 9601 East Bay Harbor Drive for future growth. April 2005, Council upzoned the gateways uh, on East Bay Harbor Drive from 65 to 75 feet BFE, directly benefiting Church by the Sea. April 2014, hotel developer purchases 9601 East Bay Harbor Drive, Church by the Sea. There are three lots for $12 million. Um, in November 2014, Bell Harbor's Church Board approves demolition. 12, 2015, Bell Harbor Church torn down for Bell Harbor Shop's $200 million expansion. It was a battle between Historic Preservation Board and the church. January 2016, Bay Harbor Town Planner approves mixed use on the property at Ocean Cadillac. February 2016, Bell Harbor Shop's purchases torn down church by the city, <coughs> which is 27,000 square feet for $30 million. February 2016, Bay Harbor Island government passes anti-BDS movement. May 2016, PNC board, uh, they motioned to defer the site plan because in the code it did not allow, it only allowed 100% retail on the ground floor. On June 2016, Bell Harbor government passes anti-BDS law. On June 2016, Bell Harbor's Church by the Sea purchases Ocean Cadillac, their eight lots for 20 million. 7-19-2016, the PNZ board approves Church by the Sea plus or minus 70,000 square feet approval without council accounting for ancillary usages, including 168-seat restaurant, car lifts, and a variance in this liquor store in close vicinity. On November 2016, again benefiting the church, approval to allow religious lobby on the ground floor, and allegedly threats to church lobbyists using Rilupa law to take over the entire property. On January 2017, benefiting the church, council eliminated requiring religious council uh, religion uh, of having council public hearings before they're put on the King Concourse. And January 2017, again benefiting the church, council approving uh, religious primary signs on the ground floor. Um, after all this is said and done, the question is what will, be, what will council be doing next with tax exempts uh, to damage these damaging decisions that you are making. Thank you. Thank you. Your comments. That is the end of public comment. Uh, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Dave's here. Yeah. Dave's here. I'm sorry. Oh, Dave. Dave is here. All right, here. Dave. You want to? You want a minute, or you want to? You're ready to go. Listen, I've been out of breath before. All right. <laughs> All right. Here, you're up. Thank you. How's traffic? It is horrible, I would yeah. say. So uh, it's normal. <laughs> it's yeah. Okay. Well, I got two accidents instead of one, so that was okay. good. All right. Thanks. Good evening. Much. How are you, Mayor? Good evening. Members of council, wonderful citizens, Bay Harbor Islands. I, thank you. I um, wanted to appear before you because uh, each year we try to uh, appear before the council to talk about upcoming sessions, some of the wish lists, and uh, that is why I'm here today. Uh, just to let you know, as you know, a session begins early this year in January, uh, so we're right around the corner. We're going through a couple of the committee meetings now, and a couple of the bills have already been uh, set up. So just, just to let you know, and, and following this, I'll have a report, uh, talk about what we talk about today, so you can review it and peruse through the issues and 
A lot of the issues, I'm pretty sure I know where we stand. Uh, we work with the Florida League of Cities, as you know, and uh, we try to do a good job. Everybody bands together and try to prevent a lot of uh, harm uh, that could be done to municipal government up in the legislature. But a couple of the bills that have been filed already early on, which are, you know, want to look at and want to review is uh, local government transparency uh, bill. Uh, it, it'll revise the legislative auditing committees. It'll uh, fiscal transparency requirements, local governments to post certain voting record on their websites and other things. So I'll get you a copy of that bill so you can take a look at it. We'll get it through the uh, village, uh, this town manager and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that and see if there's anything in there that uh, disturbs any of you or, or is of concerning and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and deal with the legislature on that. <clears throat> Second is House Bill 9 which is a federal immigration enforcement bill. As you know it's called the Sanctuary City Bill and uh, many of you have already heard you know what they're trying to do is they're just trying to enforce the federal laws and making sure that the different municipalities and counties are, uh, are doing what was supposed to and was intended to do with the federal government. There's a lot of issues as it relates to that, as you all have heard nationally. And so that's something that we're going to follow very closely. Um, both of these bills are already passed its committee, so you know that the House is ready to do business on that. But I don't, uh, I haven't seen any excitement or pa uh, you know, pallet to do anything on, uh, on the Senate side. So hopefully we'll work the Senate and make sure that you know our issues are addressed if any kind of a bill like that does move forward. Uh, cities and counties are in the same situation, so we'll be working together. Uh, it's a pretty big team that you got out there. Um, and other bills, the weapons and firearm bills always uh, find, find a way to, to surface. Uh, campaign financing bills will be, uh, will be filed, growth management, homestead waivers, public financing and construction projects, and public meeting records, just some of the basics that always get fired filed every year, uh, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on them and you'll also get a detail of the bills and the analysis that come through on those as well. Um, the, uh, at this point, what I'd like to do is, I know many of you have had, had a year to think about it, uh, some of your wish lists, some of the things that have concerned you, hopefully I'll have some answers. If I don't, I'll get back with you. Uh, if it's things we need to look after in Tallahassee, that's what we'll do, that's what we're here for. So if I may open the uh, conversation with you know mine. Um, <laughs> and that is? <laughs> um, one of the things I think we've, we've spoken before, and Dave and I spoke uh, last year, and I spoke with Ron as well. Um, I want to have a see what we can do as far as putting a new bill in front, as far as uh, an exception to the, uh, to the um, public records uh, sunshine law, as far as in the event that there is something, a discussion that deals with security or safety, that there would actually be a closed session. A transcript would be kept and could be uh, could be obtained through court order. Um, the intent here being that in the unlikely, highly unlikely event that there is a situation, for example, at our school, we would all be able to participate beforehand in helping assist and understand and plan what the response would be. There is currently a plan, obviously, that is not public record from the police department. But at the same time, if there's anything that we can do to assist, we cannot, by law, have a conversation without it being open and uh, open to the public, which would, <laughs> no, can any. which would then essentially put people at risk. I, I think we're better off having the ability to have a conversation and see if there's anything we can do to assist for the security of the school or for the, any other portions of the citizenship um, without it being accessible by someone who means to do harm. <clears throat> so this is one thing I've been talking to Dave about is trying to see what we can do is getting a bill filed, getting sponsors uh, for essentially additional security. Uh, for our, for the citizens of Bay Harbor, is that is that filed yet? Is no, we're, we're yeah. okay. can talking I, about it for about a year. He's trying to see. I know. And if, if, I may re, if I may respond, because one of the yeah. great things and great opportunities to be able to talk to each one of you on as a needed basis is that I get time to do a little bit of research. And since we've spoken, and I know we've been ha having a dialogue over this to see how you know interesting it is to the council and yourself. But uh, I just took a quick look at some of the statutes, and if, if I may, if the uh, uh, town attorney, you know. You might know a lot more about the Sunshine Law than I do, but in, in looking at it, we're governed by 286, which is the um, the, the, the public meetings um, statute, and then we're also 11907, which is exempt documents. Uh, so in looking at um, what I saw in a general capacity was that uh, 286.0113 says that a portion of the meeting that would reveal security system plans or what have you is already exempt. So. What I'm trying to say is we might have some tools in place already that might address these things. As, as you know, it's a lot harder to try to pursue a, uh, a, a bill, right. but 
if there is uh, a way to take a look at the current statute and be absorbed within that, it makes it a lot easier. You mean, you mean, it, because, yes. you mean an administrative rule? Well, right. the issue, yeah. yeah. But the, the issue becomes there are, those are exempt, except not if we were actually going to have a group meeting, and that's the problem right now. And so there's a, we would need to have, in other words, right now you could have an individual meeting one by one by one, but yeah. there's something lost in that. In other words, the ability to, to be able to sit down and co cohesively be able to create a plan or understand a plan as best to respond in an emergency situation would be lost, and instead it becomes a game of telephone where we have to meet individually. So by being able to have it as a group and obviously protect the, protect the public by having public records available if there is a real reason for that person to have a record request uh, for that specific meeting. We have a transcript, but it would be an in-camera inspection with a judge if they need it. That's so if they, that's if they uh, yeah, challenge the, uh, the public uh, denial. If somebody, ch if somebody says, I have a purpose that I need to have the public record and that's dealing with security, in, in what you and I have talked about so that people understand, we're not trying to hide anything, it w there would be a record kept, a full transcript, not just you know, notes, a full transcript, but the idea being that if someone has a reason for it, they can go in front of a circuit court judge and ask for it to be released. The judge would take a look and see if there is a real reason for the public to have uh, uh, access to what our plan would be in response to it. And, and they would do that under any condition. In other right. words, even if we created a specific you know, scenario for this, that, that would be probably right. one. And that's right, the, that's, the, that's the defense for the... Yeah. But, but 119 does, does say that um, it, it does address security. So, and, and these are all security. So in other words, if we have a security plan that we're putting into place here, under the shade uh, meeting, I think you, you could possibly have whoever is intended to be there in that meeting, council, manager, pol uh, police chief, whoever it might be that's setting up that program can meet uh, without uh, public... We're, but we were talking about that, and, and it's right now, unless we find some other way around it, the understanding is it would have to be individual as far as elected officials. That's, that was the problem. So we were, we were, we were, we were talking about it. So unless we have some way that we're, we're actually able to all meet, then I thought, I'd agree. I, 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 well, I, why don't we do this? Why don't we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll let, do let's, it. If, the point is, is this we'll something have, I always have, have a continued discussion with again, right, with yeah. Yeah. because I think yeah. there might be an avenue way to yeah. get back to that. I don't think there's anyone against Gosh, that. So. Gosh, I'll make a suggestion. I'm going to get together with Dave what I can, whenever we can mutually meet, right. see if we can accomplish the purpose by amending uh, uh, one of the provisions to, instead of a new bill, as long as we accomplish the that's same. Fine. That's fine. Okay that's purpose, right? Dave, that, that's we'll fantastic. And, and down the road, if we have to do a new bill, we will. And then there will be a, a, no, we'll a tremendous you. process that has no, to be solved. No, I understand. Solved. That's what right. you and I talked for about. Yes. We'll give you any other issues? Yes. From Kelly? Oh, I don't know sir. if you're going down the line. Or. Okay. Um, Dave, I was wondering if uh, yes, sir. Uh, a, a House Bill 17 type bill has been introduced. This was the anti home rule, home rule bill last year, which was being pushed in the House to try to take away a lot of municipal powers. Uh, I have, have not seen in. that yet. Not, not to say okay. it won't come about. You know, they, they have a right. lot of uh, bills that they, uh, they keep as, uh, as bills that they try to put things on a little right. bit later. You know, just. I have them okay. there, so yeah, but if anything surfaces. And what about municipal elections? Last year, some of the legislators tried to interfere with uh, municipal election dates for municipalities. Are they at it again? Well, there, there are a couple of, uh, of bills that do involve, um, hmm, let's see here. Bless you. Bless you. Public record, voter registration, public financing, uh, meeting. I, I saw a couple that might deal with uh, elections. Um, You're posting the results. Yeah, and, 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 and what I will do is, is update those because I, I get them all the time, so I'll go ahead and put that in my report following this. Um, but, uh, you know, just to It'll so you'll have the information. Right. Yeah. And then finally, there was a bill last year, I think it was in the House, that was dealing with financial disclosures from, you know, elected local elected officials. Is that resurfacing? We, uh, we have. I know we worked on that tremendously. Right. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that yet. Um, oh, any any time any of those pop up, those are red flags for me based on historical, you know, data here. So um, I will certainly um, advise Thank everyone you. and appreciate that. Comments. Anyone else, Kelly? Yeah, I'm very passionate, as you know, David, about um, protecting our right to regulate uh, short-term vacation rentals. Yes. For those of you who don't know, since 2011, the state of Florida has uh, preempted our ability for any little cities that didn't have ordinances on the books. So our West Island had already been protected. So uh, on the East Island right now, we have the best ordinance that we could possibly have, but it just doesn't have a lot of teeth. So we would like to get 
our authority back and our home rule and i'm sure most of my colleagues agree our home rule heroes here yes you know it's kind of funny because normally as you know every year we work on this we always see a vacation rental bill pop up right i have not seen anything you know major yet uh but but if i do we'll, we'll take a look at that i think it was some wise man who said usually they go after it every other year <laughs> yes. yes yes so but we need to stay on that and uh our special counsel susan trevarthan from weiss sirota she's kind of an expert on that and i see her at different events and uh you know she's really following it and we also have different seminars at best practices and other things so that's one thing that I'm really keeping an eye on because we need the ability to regulate that. Thank you. Absolutely, Thank absolutely. You. Yeah, yeah. you've done a fantastic job staying on that issue. So, David, last year, um, it wasn't last year. Well, it was, no, it was this year. Um, I guess before summer, I attended um, a meeting in North Bay Village that was sponsored by Senator Garcia. And it was, narrowly focused on um, CIRAs, uh, on condominium CIRAs, CIRAs, CIRAs uh, community, you know, you know, whatever that stands for, condominiums. And um, he spoke about a bill that he was, um, I think it was, he was partners with uh, <laughs> um, uh, um, Pepe Diaz. On. Yes, but he was the uh, and, uh, house uh, sponsor. Right, um, which I think was a very, very good bill that forced uh, condominium associations to be a lot more transparent. Yes. I think it raised the bar on financial reporting for condominium associations. Major. And actually uh, recommended that they put some teeth into some of the, uh, the statutes relating to their uh, non-compliance with the, you know, with the regulations that are on the books. As well as conflicts um, of I interest. Encourage, you know, I think the, the residents of Bay Harbor Islands could definitely benefit from a bill like that passing. So I urge well, you. Well, just so you know, it did pass it did last pass. year. Oh, it did pass. Yeah, and uh, the problem with that bill, though, because there's a lot of glitches. <laughs> there are a lot of glitches on, on the condominium committee of the Rural Property Public Trust Law section. We had a, a meeting about that. And, you know, some of the um, penalties that provisions of the statute may even arguably be unconstitutional because they talk about, for example, you know, um, fraudulent ballots, but when you go back to the criminal section that has the penalties, they don't list that as a violation. So there are issues that we're talking about. And um, I don't know if the glitch bill is going to come up this year, right, but they really need to. Right, it was so a good start, three. but they really need to take right. a look at I think at that might serve us because it is, there were some major gl glitches. And right. even, even with, with you know, folks running for office, they had a certain amount of time. But then what happens if nobody runs? What happens if you know, if someone is, is uh, you know, steps down, does that mean that they now can serve their two years right. again? There was, there were so many. Especially term limits yeah. to be called. Exactly. But like so most so bills, they right. just so come up with something and they follow. follow so far, the, the short, you know, the, sh the takeaway, the takeaway is that please follow any bills. Absolutely. In fact, and I'll, and I'll send you a copy of the one that passed so you see what the regulations okay, are. Okay, good. Well. Um, the only other thing that I had was um, oh really uh, emanates from my uh, serving on the Children's Trust uh, board. Um, just recently, the uh, the value adjustment board has assessed or has began collecting a uh, fee from the Children's Trust, which which is Miami Dade County Children's Services Council, and um, it just coincidentally the school board, which also has been paying the fee for about. 35 years sued the value adjustment board um, for uh, you know for actually assessing that fee against the school board which statutorily they had no right to us to uh, assess and collect um, and I've been speaking to legislators that anybody that will listen to me um, in efforts to get an amendment to the statute or um, some type of new statute that would also include Children's Services Council and that exemption from um, you know, a fee being collected by the Value Adjustment Board because it cost the Children's Trust uh, about $1.2 million last year and it's going to cost us again about $1.2 million this year and we hadn't paid it since inception and you know we're, everyone's throwing up their hands and saying hey you're lucky they didn't go back and collect you know this fee 
um, retroactively, but I, I, don't, I don't think it was the intent um, of the statute just to exclude school boards. I, I, I think at the time that the statute was probably um, passed, uh, it was intended for, um, well, it was intended for schools, obviously, but I don't think at that time there was even such a thing as uh, children's services councils. So I, I don't think it's a huge fix, but I think a small, you know, wordsmithing of that statute could save children's services councils across the state um, uh, tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, that's something that we certainly can look at right now and take a look at if there's any bill that, you know, an amendment like that could be, you know, put to, we'll, we'll work on language, we'll work with yourself and the uh, manager. Right, and I, I think actually the folks at the Children's Trust are putting together a letter. Oh, okay. Um, a little narrative on exactly, you know, what, you know, what the problem is and how to fix it. Then we can get the guidance to support them if uh, and when they come up with language that would, would do that. All right, the only other comment I have is bring us money. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> bring I, us uh, money. It's been a long time, David. This is the year to do it. It's has been it, been a long, has it really yeah. been a long time? Yeah, yeah. it's been a long time. Right, actually, it's David, I just time. have to interject <laughs> that David has served us well in, in, yeah. in getting us appropriations. Uh, the problem is Governor Scott, who line had well, and vetoed yeah, them. Yeah, so we've, for not, well, not just for Bay Harbor, well, but for well, I, I think colleges. we might have even been able to work some money out even outside of the uh, of the process, too, right. that, that we had, I think, at some point. So, I mean, we're always trying to make up where I didn't Right, but the governor was vetoing yes, not only he, for he, municipalities, yes. but colleges and universities. Yeah, that's right. correct. All over, but this projects is, all over the state. It's election year, so I think he's going to veto a little bit less. Yeah, so, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll so see. We're, we're hoping. Yes. We'll see. Well, uh, I'll be brief. I mean, uh, in the save our time, because we, uh, we're running a little late, um, I'll give you my, my little cheat sheet later, because, you know, I could probably spend the rest of the night talking about the ills of the legislature. So, um, but um, we've spoken several times between now and the previous session, so and we'll continue that. And of course, I'll be up in Tallahassee a few times, fighting um, to keep us back to square one. I guess. And unfortunately, for those of you that don't know, unfortunately, our legislature um, sometimes we have to fight just to get back to where we were from the previous year. So, and that's unfortunate. So. That being said, thank you so much, Dave, for, for coming. And we happy will holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you very and much. I'll see thank you, uh, I'll probably see you before the holidays. Well, well just, just for yeah. the record, because I have to say this, because I'm so darn proud of my daughter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she was the cast as one of the lead singers for the Radio City Christmas Spectacular. That's right. So congratulations. congratulations. That's right. So, that's right. Congratulations, Marilyn. Yeah, Shout out to her. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so right, much. Take thank care. You. Good night, Dave. All right, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Um, hearing no nothing pulled. I'll we have, move it. Got a second? Can we have a poll vote, please? Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, Councilmember Fuller? Four. Councilmember Reed? Four. Councilmember Sauber? Four. Councilmember Jaffe? Four. Vice Mayor Bruder? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four. Mayor Adams? All right, number five. Item five, consideration and approval on an ordinance on second reading, increasing the monthly base and flow charges for sewer service. An ordinance of the Donald Bay Harbor Islands amending section 20-9 of the town code, increasing the monthly base and flow charges for sewer service, providing for penalties, providing for servability, providing for qualification, providing for an effective date. I'll move it. Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Just for the record, this is a pass through. Right. Yes, it is. This right. Is not, yeah. Correct. This is on county. And board. number six is a pass through also. All right. Paul vote, please. Councilman Yaffe? Four. Uh, Councilman Saber? Four. Councilman Reed? Four. Councilman Fuller? Four. Vice Mayor Bruder? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four. Item six. Item six, consideration and approval of an ordinance on second reading, increasing the monthly charge for water service. An ordinance of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands amending section 20-5 and 20-6 of the Code of Bay Harbor Islands to increase the monthly charge for water service to uh, $4.53 per 1,000 gallons and to increase the minimum monthly service charges for each water meter to $21.08, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. Have a motion? Move it. Have a second? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? All right, poll vote. Councilmember Fuller? Four. Councilmember Reed? Four. Councilmember Saber? Four. Councilmember Yaffe? Four. Vice Mayor Bruder? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four.
passes unanimously. Number seven. Item seven, consideration and approval of an ordinance on first reading amending section 23-11 of the town code to allow for additional building height in the B1 business district. Mm -hmm. An ordinance of the town council of the Donald Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending the town zoning and planning code to amend section 23-11C to allow for additional building height in the B1 business district, provided the developer participates in the town's public benefit program, establishing a public benefits program for additional building height, including specific built public benefits desired by the town. So I am I'll, I'll second. All right, we have a motion, a second. We have some public comments, so we'll do that one first. Uh, Leo uh, Carrero, come on in. I'm sorry, how do you, you pronounce it? The car and the narrow passageway, right? All right. <laughs> got it. Car and narrow. But it's got native Brazilian. Um, Name and address, please, for the record. Oh, sorry. Leo Carnero at um, 1050 93rd Street. And uh, before you guys vote on this, I just want to, as a citizen, I just let you guys know that uh, this is a goal for me, is my opinion on it. Um, what's a little, you know, we're not going 100 feet over. I think that's scheduling 10. I mean, I think it will create more jobs. Um, in the sense is, I, I work in construction, so, you know, the contract is bigger. I mean, not even for me as somebody who runs a job, but the, the guy who's doing the labor, it's more work that he has guaranteed to take extra pay to, you know, to their families. And then when this stuff is done, built, this extra floor that they do build, maybe it's an invitation for future businesses, and they'll be willing to pay a premium to oversee your beautiful town. So... As a citizen, I don't have a problem with this, and I'll you know, advise you guys to vote for it. So, Thank, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your comments. All right, Francis Newhut? I need to the parks and rent. All right, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> this is number seven, right? Number yes. seven. Seven, yes. Okay, um, this is about putting, um, this is the business district with that new development on correct. the Grand Concourse, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, first of all, no, I not, it's not for that specific. It's, just, it's for the entire it's the business. Height. 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 It's not for any specific it's for your property oh, okay. as well. But right. um, what's happening now is um, we do have. Okay. The business district is 65 feet. The gateways on East Bay Harbor Drive, which I mentioned before, you gave to uh, the church. You upzone that so that they can sell their property for 20 million and uh, or 12 million um the property on of uh, mr talber uh was 65 feet that's commercial you up so that to 75 feet um now i'm in the business district and i put in a site plan for the business district because it was 65 feet and everyone told me well eventually it would be 75 feet so there is some kind of going on here because this property, if you put unity of title to it, uh, you have one gateway there that's on the residential, affecting all the uh, houses on the other side of the, ba of the water there. And um, we already went through this where uh, they did not on the comprehensive plan, and it's increasing intensity on that particular space there. I know we don't follow the comprehensive plan anymore, but yes, it will be uh, very dead. First of all, they're putting another floor. We have no more parking. Hello. There's no more parking. They have to put everything. If they add a floor, they have to put it on top or in, in, the, in the property itself. So now um, you've got 75 feet. You've got it on a gateway, which you promised us a waterfront. And now we have the problems of, uh, of everything. Uh, even usages, these usages that you are putting in, you mentioned affordable housing or workforce housing, which has been um, on the news every day, people going to jail, hello, and now you're going to put it in our town when we're selling million dollar condos. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. That We're, we're bringing down this town. Thank, Thank you for you. your comments. I have a request, Jordan. Um, perhaps you want to have Mr. Miller go over this, and we were handed uh, an addendum late and uh, specifically mention the rooftop, roof, rooftop structures in 2312. So maybe... Uh, we can have Mr. Miller, after we finish yeah, public we'll comment, finish I think it would be appro appropriate yeah. for him to... Then he can address all of the comments. Yeah, I mean, I, okay. I think that would be uh, fine. At some point. Sure, sure. Um, I'm sorry. Who would that be? Yeah. Who's <laughs> there? 
Harry. Oh my God. <laughs> Harry. Should have. Should have been a doctor. <laughs> Harry Bruder, 1281 94th Street. Um, as you know, I've been t talking about, I've been pro-development for 23 years and I've never swayed from pro-development. Um, over the past 23 years, I've been not always right and uh, on certain issues uh, with development, with the height uh, going to 15 stories. And I commend you guys for fighting me pretty tough with that one. And we, at this point we have, probably the nicest town in the state of Florida. I mean, the way we, we uh, just it shows you the, the, the development from the, from the way the hur we recovered from the hurricane. It's just, a, it's just a trickle down effect that new development's always gonna be the best for the town. And, you know, as far as this is concerned with, you know, you know working with the developers, I don't know, I'm in business a long time. I think I'm pretty successful. And uh, there's no guarantee a developer's gonna going to make money, you know, and he's going to be successful. We need to work with these developers and, you know, the King Kong has been a sleepy thing, a sleepy place for a, since the day I walked in here and probably 30 years before that and I think it's the time because with the new construction and the socioeconomic situation we have today, we could wake up this, uh, uh, this King Kong course. Um, and in another way, it trickles down also the success of every business and every building and every office building and every retail building and everything that happens that succeeds. You know, I don't like to say it like this, but it does bring more money for the town because it raises the taxes and the property t the properties go up. It's just simple math, you know, simple, simple business. And, you know, when people succeed, we succeed. And uh, that's where we have to look. That's the way we have to look at it. There's no other way to look at it. If he succeeds, we succeed, everybody succeeds, and we all become winners from people succeeding. And I don't have a problem with seeing nicer restaurants, nicer retail, can I get another few seconds? A few, few seconds. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I, I believe that if some, if a, one property succeeds, that means everybody else around it, like you see Las Solas, and one guy, you know, like my wife, you know, she goes into the restaurant, then she goes into 12 stores, you know, she gets uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, so, good place you know, to end that's it. that's how it right. works, you Thank know, you, so, but, Mr. Uh, and anyways, <laughs> we're going to get, I'm going to get into trouble. Thanks for letting me share. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Harry. Yeah. That's you're going to get it, it tonight. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike, come on up, please. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, we received, Eric, Eric, all right. For those of you who don't know, we received, um, I guess, uh, an amended version of the first reading. So, Mike, if uh, you and uh, probably, I guess, uh, uh, Frank could briefly explain the changes. Sure. Do you want a little background on this before we... I mean, we already... I mean, we all know what's... Just last, last yeah. month, you, yeah. we had, you had a discussion <clears throat> on a request from a newer property owner in our community to um, uh, ask you to consider raising the height of, uh, of commercial uh, buildings in the, in the B1 commercial area. The, the reasoning was uh, primarily that to uh, facilitate a Class A kind of building, well, you need t a little bit taller floors for the office space, and for a retail component, generally, you want to at least 14 feet on your ground floor uh, for the store uh, operations and the you know the displays and so forth. Uh, when you do the math equations, they felt that they um, uh, a little bit taller height would would um, allow them to achieve what they wanted to achieve, which is one more story to the to the complex. Um, we you know about a. 15 years ago now, some years are flying by, we, the community had a series of visioning sessions and design charrettes. There's a couple uh, consultants came in, there was consensus. We rewrote the code about 10 or 11 years ago now in the B1 district. And uh, one of the consultants said 65 feet, one said 75 feet. The council t t at that time decided 65 feet. So the, and now we have the charter at 75 feet, so that's, that's the cap, if you will, unless you do the, the charter amendment uh, re referendum. Um, we, at your requ request, there was a group of the staff members that worked on this ordinance. Um, Mr. Simone and myself and Marlene primarily were the 
thinkers on this and we tried to, uh, based on what we see in other communities where rather than just simply changing the height from 65 feet to 75 feet, that there would be a public benefit program uh, put in place, uh, very similar to Sunny Isles Beach, Miami, um, 21 ordinances. If you go, if you want, if a developer is asking them to go taller, there's a quid pro quo, if you will. There's a trade-off in uh, FAR or building height or density type of things in exchange. Uh, the sun, uh, community of Sunny Isles Beach is a good example. They, with all the redevelopment of all the high rises, they got multiple beach access. They get money for parks development. Um, even if your setback is uh, decreased, they get some money. So there's these are established programs, and they're they're geared towards the desires of the, each community. We uh, put together an initial list in the ordinance. It can be amended. Uh, we tried to uh, identify things that we saw in some of the other ordinances and things that are uh, important to you as a community. Um, this could be changed. Um, we tried to come up with at least minimum qualifiers uh, of things rather than saying, I'll give you one more parking space or, or something like that. Uh, and again, th these are things that can be changed. So there are specific items, affordable housing, dedication of public parks and open space, undergrounding utility lines, uh, green building standards, excess parking, uh, things that are in our capital improvement budget, and then there's kind of a, a catch-all, if you will, of things we, um, that would allow you some flexibility. And our, our intention for you is to give you a tool that's flexible based on each situation. One project may you know, want something over on the, some of these things on this, one, on this side, some on, and the, and the balance may change. So we're trying to give you a tool if you want to pursue this um, with some criteria, but also some flexibility. Mike, can you um, just clear up one thing? Yep. There was a comment made by uh, Mrs. Newhart about that waterfront lot that happens to be owned by the folks that own the yes. four right. lots on Kane Concourse. Is that waterfront lot considered B1 Business no. district? No, in fact, uh, so this, this legislation has nothing to do with that, That's right? right? It, it has residential okay. land use. It is zone gateway, right? But the gateway right. says for that lot, you refer to the residential. Right. Uh, it's not uh, applicable to this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, to, just for, thank you. Good for, for our edification. Yeah, yeah, for our own edification. And we do right. follow the comprehensive yeah. plan, by the way. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, personally, um, I, I mentioned to Frank today, and also mentioned to, to Michael. Um, you know, I, I don't like the specifics because um, I, I don't think it's applicable for every single project because, again, you're talking about the entire business district. What may be applicable for one specific project may not be very good to our public benefit for a different project. And, you know, I'd like to see a more generic phrasing of, of the verbiage for what, you know, in the bullet points because, for example, you look at... Um, um, you know, the green buildings, it, it, I, I like the idea that you put one or more, but I think it needs to be more of where the council needs to vote on the issue case by case. Um, so you know, for example, George, you, yeah. So a, the, the key word here is may. No, I know that, I know. Not but will be, so that gives us the ability to do exactly it, what you're talking about. Before. It does, but I don't want to lead people on. Like, for example, you look at the, the workforce housing, which I don't particularly favor for this for this district, but you know, if you're looking at a 25% um, minimum, that may be great if, for example, you had 40 units and you're giving 10 out of the 40 are gonna be, you're gonna do this, this you know, project and it's gonna be workforce. But if you had four units and you gave away one, you, you kind of sneaked your way into it. And again, I don't wanna, you're 100% you're right, what Josh said, we may, but I, I think it should be, again, more generic. So if, if we're gonna pass it, I. I I want to put on the record that it needs to be where the council is going to be looking at a case by case. That we don't want to give the the inference that we're that if you did X, mm -hmm. you're necessarily going to get it because that may not be the case. I think that's understood in the ordinance, and also I think you could add, you know, for one or more of the following public benefits without limitation. I mean, there may be other benefits, you know, public benefit, maybe other items that could benefit the public and benefit our town that are not included in the list. 
So mm -hmm. I would want to just clarify that where you're not yeah. limited to. Right. Um, and at least right. the last one is any other contribution. Any other right. contribution. Any other except contribution. Right. 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 And, and let me say, Jordan, one of the yeah. things I, I see where you're going, but at the same time, I think this covers it because if you look at A within 8A, right. it talks about it says the public, the town council approves the request Correct. at a public meeting, meeting. and right. and so it gives us the ability, which you're talking about before any of this other stuff. Happens. I just want to make sure because you know I I just don't want to be in a position where we're we're oh, we're, we're stuck. giving up. Right. Yeah, where we're giving no, ourselves something because this is something that if we're we're going to give the extra 10 feet. We want to make sure that that no, the intent is. That's what I want. That. Exactly. Okay. Any other comments? Well, there's no obligation, is there? No, 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 this no, ordinance? no. I mean, somebody may come in and say, I'll, I'll give you A, B, and C, and the we council say, no, says, thank you. No, thank you. That's we can why, say no. That's correct. Why we even use the if word it, may, right. right. Even if it's something that they have in their mind, they fulfilled by doing one of these things, we at any time can we say, can no, say no. We can say no. Right. Even if they. Pick right. one of these That's and correct. say okay. Kind of like the gateway in a way. Right. So, okay, I just want to make sure. All right, any other comments on number seven? I think there was, wasn't a question on the uh, changes. Michael, we can't current. hear you, or I'm Sorry. not sure the people behind Speak you can up. hear Sorry. you. I think there was a question, well, I think, on, a question on the I think it's highlighted on, yes, as right. to what, what the changes are. There was just there a, couple more was words. a request by the attorney representing the uh, new property owner that wanted to clarify that if you lift it up, you can still do the elevator shaft on top and, and things yeah, that you allow regularly. Right. So that was a clarification. Thing. It's in the general ordinance anyway. Yes, right. Of right. course. All right. Hearing no other comments, um, can we have a poll vote, please? I just want to say one thing. Oh. Um, just to clarify, we have a lot of people in the audience. We have a charter that caps our height for the whole town or the East Island essentially at 75 feet. And by code, which, you know, the charter can only be changed by a vote of the people and the code we can change. So we could just change this code for nothing. But we have this, um, this idea that came from the development community that says, well, change it and here we're going to give you something for it. And this allows us to do that. So I, I think uh, it's actually very good. We've talked about it all the time, but never had a mechanism. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good idea. Thank you, development community. All right. Well. All right. Paul, vote. Excuse me. Councilmember Yaffe? Four. Councilmember Sauber? Four. Councilmember Reed? Four. Councilmember Fuller? Four. Vice Mayor Bruder? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four. Yeah. All right. Number eight. Item 8, consideration approval of an ordinance of first reading, amending Chapter 4 of the Town Code to prohibit animal, am, animal, animal uh, feeding on public right-of-ways. An ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending Chapter 4 of the Town's Adopted Code of Ordinances entitled Animal Control by adding <coughs> Section 418 entitled Prohibiting the Feeding of Stray or Ownerless Cats on Public Property, providing for civil liberty, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. All right. Can I have a motion, a second for discussion? I'd like to make a motion that we delay the vote on this in lieu of getting a group together to put a comprehensive TNR plan. Well, we... Oh, what, oh, what plan can we do? Uh, well, I would, I, yes, I, w I move to defer it. I would like you, we have a lot of people in the audience who are considered subject matter experts, and I would like you to give us until January to put together a plan with staff but since they're here, you know, they can share some ideas with you. I, I agree. I think before we vote on this, I would like to get a better, I mean, idea. I th sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, I, I agree with Kelly. I would like to see staff and maybe some of the experts come up with a plan. Just saying, you know, feed the cat, don't feed the cat. That's... I'm just okay. wondering why we didn't defer it an hour ago. Yeah, I know. Exactly. That, 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 I'm not sure. Hour, don't you say don't want to talk deferred. about it if right. it's going to be deferred. Yeah, if it's going to be deferred. I want to talk about If it's going to be deferred, next deferred. Next I, wanted item, wanted next to, I want the group to meet. Okay. I agree with Kelly. The group should meet. They should have the experts. They should meet with... Um, they should meet with the manager. The manager. Come up with a plan. Not just this is what we want to do, but a comprehensive plan. I agree with Kelly, and then come back and actually have a Let vote. Let me just on make something. a few points then, in Absolutely. Lou, and, and, and uh, you know we've all spoken. No, uh, well, no. Well, wait, if we're, we're going to defer it, on to the next so item. Is this a discussion on the? Hold on, excuse me. This excuse, is, excuse me. 
excuse me hold on if a council member wants to defer it and the council so chooses it gets deferred that's the process it's you're either going to be deferred or signed but we have a motion and a second to defer it and now we're going to discuss that motion is that we're going to discuss just one just a brief couple of points or no you you want to you want to defer it so let's vote to defer it and and we'll I just, step. I, I just feel bad for everybody who waited right. here I mean, because I mean, this would have mentioned it was, dirt. It was excuse me let me I, I, I just no. Uh, no, I'll explain. Oh. Forget. There's a motion in it's, the second. Yeah, but you can discuss on the. But motion. here's the thing. I mean, it's a. This is a very limited. Should have been an hour ago. Ordinance. You know that nobody's saying, trap cats, capture them, do anything to the cats other than limiting where you could feed them. I'm, I'm just saying that's what the ordinance is. So it's very discreet and very limited. I mean, what, like what, well, what will the group you know get together to discuss and you know. It simply says you can't feed a cat on public property. You could feed a cat in front, on your property, in front of your property, but not in a town parking lot, for example. So I'm not sure what well, you know, other I just I really wanted to take a minute. I could have done it already just to make two or three points to tell you where we're going, because maybe in the next two months you'd like to do a little research on your own. You know, the, the manager provided us with uh, an article from PETA that is entitled Feral Cats Trapping is the Kindest Solution. Okay, PETA is great big organization deals with lots of animals. We have some local organizations that deal specifically with feral cats. For example, the Cat Network. Uh, we have many volunteers here who are trained by Miami-Dade County. We have uh, some volunteers who have worked for various cities. Kelly, Kelly I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, we can't, we, we have an okay. item, we have a protocol. Doing this. The okay. fact that the people here are waiting to speak about it, we either speak about it or we don't. But if they're, if you're going to speak about Chief, it, can you get the hold on, Chief? Can you get the vice mayor to come in because we need to vote on this. So just tell, come on in, because because we yeah. But I need to. We're going to vote on whether or not we're going to defer it or not. So you know, all those in favor in favor of deferring it, say aye. All right, she's in favor. You're in favor. Anyone against? No one, no one's against. So the eyes have it, I guess. Does that? I mean, it's a I mean, it's, all right. It's, so we're going to defer. It. Okay. All right. So we'll defer it till till January. But I think if you're going to defer, it's already well. If not if we're going to. It's already been deferred, but but somebody needs to schedule a meeting and coordinate a meeting then, because a lot of people came out here this evening who wanted to speak. And just to say we're going to talk about it again no. in January without doing anything between now and January <coughs> is counterproductive. So I'm not sure who's going to be in charge of that, Kelly. Okay, I, mean, I will take the lead well, on getting some of these volunteers to have a meeting with the staff to put together basically a comprehensive TNR program. That, that's with fine. some I details in the future please if yeah I, that you want to defer it in the beginning well I, I i thought i might have been contacted before this when i saw this um agenda item on wednesday you know i thought it was very drastic and uh you know i talked to ron a little bit about it and possibly no i, I meant the beginning of the meeting when we asked, i mean we, we have an item on the agenda in our world and that way everybody knows so they're not so, you know okay. i mean i mean and by the way just for the record you know, for everyone's edification. I mean, I contacted, you know, did my research before I was prepared to, to discuss it, including calling our county. And by the way, I will mention just for, you know, this, um, our, I spoke to our county commissioner, January 14th is going to be a TNR day for Miami-Dade County in Bay Harbor Islands. So we are going to have an actual citywide for Bay Harbor Islands on January 14th. Sally Heyman's going to sponsor it with the Animal Services Department. So, but Ron, Excuse me, Ron. Can you just make sure that we get all their information? I'm sure we can use the public record, and we'll invite anyone that wants to come and speak to you in regards to this. Okay. Mr. Mayor, just one quick question. I, 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 is for actually um, make them, uh, you know, fixing them so they yeah, don't have to Yeah, I know. So we are here uh, saying about not feeding them, starving them. Un unfortunately, the, I, I understand, but the council, you know, it was proposed and it was approved to defer the item. Okay. So. So they can you know, they, they can leave all their information me, with the back. Listen, this is going to drag the meeting a little bit, but I think it's re it's reasonable, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. A lot of these people did not put their their names in for good and welfare because they thought they were going to be speaking about an actual item. I think we should reopen good and welfare if they want to speak about this. Let me know because it is. I, I feel bad for anybody who's. I do too. I am. Okay. I, if, if someone wants to speak about I, it, I believe the vice mayor is collecting names. Phone oh, hold on, guys, guys, guys. You know. Okay. On. What about this? 
second. What if I withdraw the motion to defer and we it's hear? It's already it. been uh, approved. It's already it's approved. Already <laughs> approved. Is it? If you wanna, can you undefer? It can be with a supermajority. If you wanna, if you wanna move it and, and second it, you can have with a supermajority. You can, you can. It wasn't even taken back again. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, right. All right. Can we, can we reopen Good and Well for people yes. who want to speak? Yeah. You can if we vote. No, I'm going right. to move that we reopen Good and Well for anybody who wants to speak. Since it's no longer on the agenda, uh, you, they can actually speak and have your three minutes up here and speak if anything you want to talk about. Right. I second it. All right. Motion. Well, second. Yes. Actually, let's just make it two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Two minutes is two fine. Minutes. That's fine. All right. So, ladies motion. and gentlemen, well, let me motion explain. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, because we have deferred the motion until uh, until uh, January, and you will all, as you can see, we're asking you to please put your name, phone number, and email. We are allowing all of you, as if it was good and well, for two minutes to discuss whatever you'd like to discuss at the moment regarding regarding the number eight. Number eight, and then you will be contacted for a meeting to have a fuller discussion about what we should do so that it can come back to the council at that time a more the comprehensive and the manager is going to be contacting you correct and, and the manager will have a meeting with all of the interested parties not the council but the manager so that way um, because because of sunshine, no one individual. You, know, you can't have two or more individual council members. But you can have one. You can have right. one, and one, and one, one and then one and then one. But, but I'm sure all of us would want to be part of it. So if the manager could do that, he can bring it back to the council as far as recommendations. Well, it's kind of like the business district signed ordinance. So I would like to attend this I, meeting. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. Well, all right, well, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, uh, I think that you ought to make a provision. If, Josh is okay with it that the testimony not be cumulative okay. so that if if more than one person agrees with the other that one person speak instead of the saying the same thing over and over again okay, okay. that's fine Kathleen right, fine. Kennedy Hi, Kathleen. Thank you. Kathleen Kennedy, 9180 West Bay Harbor Drive. The couple that brought this to somebody's attention, are they here in the room tonight? Uh, please, I, I don't think it's appropriate to. So. Okay, well, that's fine. Because it was one individual. I mean, I was here because I spoke to them when they were here complaining about cats. You know what? Uh, this is a shame because you broke down, you, I see Mr. Kasdan, the developers broke down all these buildings and poor owners had to walk away from their animals, cats. They couldn't take them to where they were going. And what did we get? We had cats running the streets. Then we got rats. And I remember people coming up here in front of all of you and saying, we have rats. And guess who took care of the rat problem? The cats. So you know what, really, this is the, you know, I've been trying to get a plaque for a friend of mine, and the cats are getting more attention than Doris Morano. And this is disgusting that you guys have the time to talk about friggin' cats, beautiful animals that are taking care of this island. They're running around this house right now. I see the traps all around uh, this town hall, okay? And I, somebody, by the way, Marlene, I forgot to give you credit for the Facebook. Thank you. But somebody told me there's a cat in, in the house running around catching all the rats. Come on, guys. Get real. I know, Kelly, you love rats. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know you love cats, Kelly. And I thank you for that. I'm sorry. And I do, too. I love animals, period. I know who's the problem here on this council for the cats. Get a life, love animals, and let's take care of these rats. Uh, excuse me. All right, just all right. For those of you that don't know our protocol, please no clapping. I think it's we need Hi. we have an agenda. Yeah, you can you can do that just like the county. All right, so we're gonna go down. Heidi Lee. Heidi. Heidi. All right, come on. All right. Sorry about that, Kelly. All right. I'll be quick. My name is Heidi Leva. I live at 1065 97th Street, and I basically agree with everything the lady before me said. I'm an animal lover. Leave the cats alone. They're not hurting anybody. And trust me, just in the last two, last six months, two cats here in the parking lot, and one of the workers who lit, worked downstairs 
got rid of them for me at, because after the cats caught them. So thank you. All right, thank you. you. Dorothy Eckert. All right, please, Mrs. Kennedy. What come did on. you say? Please, no clapping. Oh, I didn't We're doing thank you. I'm having an air problem. Okay. Okay. Silence. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dorothy Eckert. I live at uh, 10350 West Bay Harbor Drive, and I basically concur with everything that was said, but I also want to say that these are living, breathing animals, beings. I mean, they, they will s starve if they are not fed. They will rummage in our garbage. They will, it will be a worse problem if, you know, they're not kept fed. And, and they are, they were dumped here by people and it's not their fault. I mean, and personally, I too love animals and I feel so sad for them. Some of these cats just, it's very sad. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but I hope that you will hear us out and change your uh, votes. All right, thank you for thoughts. your comments. Lisa Portman. Thank you so much, council members, mayor. I know this is redundant. Um, I hate public speaking, by the way. Anyway, Start I- Start with your name and your address. I'm sorry, thank place. you. Lisa Bortman, 10350 West Bay Harbor Drive. <laughs> I believe we don't want to be a community to be an animal haters. I think that we as a community can find a solution to really do the right thing, which would be TNR. And I'm looking forward to working with the town manager and hopefully coming up with a solution that works for everybody. But I think signing an ordinance saying do not feed the cats is really not going to have a solution. I think it's going to make it worse. So I think that's the, I don't want to live in a community that believes in that. And I know a lot of other cities and counties have put TNR in place and it's worked very well for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Joe. Joe. Is that Joe? You know, I'm just going to defer because. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Leah. Leah Ray. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Leah Ray. I live on 9880 West Bay Harbor Drive. I am an animal lover, but I prefer cats over rats. <laughs> um, I just have notes because I'm not a good public speaker. So I recently met a 90, a 74-year-old cat lady that opened my eyes to her world. She knew all the cats in the neighborhood and had names for each of them. She recently had to move out of the building on the corner of 9800 Bay Harbor Drive where she had lived for over 20 years because her building was sold. She had been taking care of a family of three cats for over 19 years. I guess it was a generational thing. But she actually had been feeding them, giving them flea medicines, getting them fixed. They were the healthiest cats I've seen in a long time. I have two cats, but sure, hers were very healthy, too. It's not a, I don't know as much as mine. But anyway, the point is, um, I can't imagine this woman's world if her cat, if these cats were taken from her. She had been displaced from where she lived, and she has to walk down the road to feed them. And it, obviously, they were part of her family. And um, I just feel that she's an elderly woman, and this gives her something to do. And cats, actually, as I'm sure everyone knows, especially living on islands, they take care of rat problems. If you were to look up a National Geographic. Um, article recently, so, uh, September 2017, they have homeless cats are recruited to fight rising tides of rats in DC, in Vancouver, in New York. Um, there's another, another article, I'm sorry I didn't print them out. Um, a woman uh, doctor in Vancouver said that there are rats now with MRSA strains, the same as the human MRSA strains because of the rats in the area. and. They are now recruiting cats to take care of them. And not that I'm praying that this happens to us, but I want you to know, in Bay Har uh, North Bay Village, North Bay Island, when they took out all the feral cats, they had an infestation of rats. So anyway, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. And you, you did a great job public speaking. Who do we have next? Mayor Linda Zilber. Mayor Zilber. Oh, girl. Oh, two more. 
We live on the water. When you live on the water, you have water rats. But we settled this a long time ago. When I was mayor, we had a group that came here and they were interested in doing something about the cats and we had Cat Network come. They take the cats and they neuter them and they bring them back and it's a wonderful community. So we already decided that, that we were gonna let the cats live happily and have Cat Network come and help the cats to be healthy cats. Thank you. Right, thank thank you. you for your comments. Cesar Suarez. Cesar. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, town council members. My name is Cesar Suarez, and I reside at 9745 Bay Harbor Terrace, apartment number six. <clears throat> First of all, I want, I want to briefly say that I believe number eight should not be ratified because it is ineffective, lacks any real strategy, and instead advocates cruel and abusive treatment of stray cats. According to the Humane Society, the general logic behind feeding bans is that with no feeding, the stray cats would generally go away, which is generally not the case. Instead, what it does cause is the cats to become desperate because they can survive, in many instances, weeks without food. And what generally occurs is that it makes the cats go straight closer to businesses, homes, and dumpsters, which basically increases the propensity for disease transmission from cats to human beings. So. Uh, I also want to quickly point out that instead the town council should adopt, should not ado adopt item number eight, and instead consider legislating TNR, which is trap, neuter, and return. The basic strategy behind TNR is to trap cats, have them spayed or neutered, get them vaccinated against rabies, identifying them with an inner ear tip, and returning them to their original territories. <clears throat> the cruelty law in Dade County is defined as an act or conditions which result in the in inhumane treatment of an animal. Chapter 5, Section 5.4 of Miami-Dade County Code defines cruelty to animals as to deprive an animal by neglect or refusal of any of the following forms of necessary sustenance, food and water. So basically, stray cats are living, breathing creations of God who have the same rights as humans to not suffer. Ratifying this ordinance will only create widespread cruelty and suffering through starvation of stray cats. And as such, number eight should not be ratified. Thank you. Thank you. Next comment. Uh, Suli Caram Caramelo. Thank you. Uh, council members, Mayor, uh, Suli Caramelo, 1165 98th Street. I am a feeder by South Beach town of Surfside, Sunny Isles, and North Bay Village. We are the only municipality who do not have a TNR program. This is not kosher. <laughs> we destroy several buildings. Most people move out of those buildings, leaving those cats behind. We need to take care of them because we are at fault, because we put those buildings in place. I like the progress, but I also don't like everything that is going on. I think we should do a TNR program. It's not like we have millions of cats like Miami Beach does. We have a handful. Yeah. Why so much to do about nothing? You know, let's TNR and get that under control and stop bitching and moaning about the cats. You know, it's half a dozen cats. It's not like two million. Right. Please reconsider Section 8. Thank you. All right, thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, no, hearing no other. Um, we'll close public comment again. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Jordan. Yes, yeah, please. You know, since we've already heard the opinion of several citizens here, can I suggest that we do not defer this and just let this die now, and then yes. later, yes. and then later on come back with a renewed T and R plan? Yeah. Can, can I have yeah. a consensus on that? Because we've already invested the time into this. So. I second that. Okay. I second okay. that idea. So. Anyone object? Nope. All right, nope. Hearing none, okay. there you go. So come on, come All right. with the... Now, hold, hold on one second. Now, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. All right, now, uh, excuse me. Uh, Ron. Excuse, excuse me. Uh, so well, let's re, re, well, we rejuvenate it. Re, 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 so, so, Ron, you're going to meet with these individuals, and we'll come back in January. Just with an update. And, and, then, and then also keep in mind, one of the things I'd like to do is... Also, um, in the, since we don't have a meeting in December, if we can advertise in the newsletter, if you can get with Commissioner Heyman's office and advertise the fact that we are going to have on January 14th at the 
through the commissioner's office that the animal services department and i believe also the cat network is also going to be involved in that as well to to have a t n r you know for for those cats that are in bay harbor islands and i believe also surfside in bell harbor is in that too i think she's trying to get the the tri municipal area to one of the things that i i will mention because i did do a little bit of homework you know most people may not know that are not cat lovers that miami dade county provides you know spader neutering and vaccine shots for free and a lot of people that that are maybe watching this on tv or who don't know um it's it's a free service you know you can even actually get a trap from the county for a deposit and trap the animal and bring it to the county and they'll do it at no charge to you and when you think about how many cats are in this community it's not being utilized. In 2016, there were 60 cats that are not from an individual home, meaning they were on the streets in this zip code, and out of the 60 cats in 2016, only five came from Bay Harbor. And in 2017, out of the 13 cats also in, in this zip code, only four are from Bay Harbor. So in almost two years, we're talking about nine out of 73. And what that says to me is that it's, it's great to talk about feeding, but if we're not talking about spade and neutering and vaccinating, you're really not talking about caring about animals. I grew up with cats and feeding them's the easy part. It's taking care of them. So, Mr. Manager, I would just... No, no, we, we had the comment where Mr. says, Mr. Manager, if we could just make sure that we get all of their, their input and we can get that on the agenda, okay? All right, we're gonna move on to number nine. Item 9, consideration and approval of an ordinance on first reading, amending section 18-22 of the town code to require property owners to underground their service lines. That's the line from the pole to the house. An ordinance of the town council of the town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending section 1822, entitled new construction rehabilitated structure. Hold on, hold on, hold on, excuse me, excuse me. Members of the public, please. We still have the rest of the meeting to go through, so if you want to speak, feel free to go outside. But if you could just give us the opportunity to finish our agenda, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk. An ordinance of the town council of the town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending section 1822, entitled new construction and rehabilitated structures to require property owners to underground the service line or lateral from the building to the utility pole, poles or underground facilities providing for serviceability, providing for qualification and providing an effective date. I'll move it. Second. I have a motion, a second, any discussion? We have public comment. Francis Newhart again. Mayor, just so before uh, France speaks, yeah, please. just so you understand that um, it's been long, long the town policy that when new construction or work is being done, that the building department requires undergrounding from the rear of the house or rear of the property into the building. Right. Um, this really was just to clarify it, to make sure that yeah, there's I no misunderstanding of what, what, what needs to happen, and that's okay. why this... Look, I just, before... Because I had talked to you about this and, and to Dale about this in the past. I mean, I'm glad this is on the agenda and that you're codifying this. I think that the idea of having policies, which are not ordinances, um, results in confusion and, and, and sometimes unexpected surprises when, um, you know, homeowners or property owners are, are, are planning renovations and so forth. So the fact that it's a written ordinance as opposed to a policy, which sometimes is ambiguous, I think is important. Absolutely. All right. Mrs. Newhart? Should I go outside? There are more people out there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Feel free. Um, first of all, what's nice about utility facilities, you can see them. And you can see uh, this um, substandard work that FPNL is doing. And um, I've been complaining for 100 years because we have uh, behind our buildings uh, the old poles. They're wobbly, whatever. Uh, they're rusted, they're this, they're that. I mean, it's so easy to underground them. And, um, this, what I'm trying to say is this ordinance is nothing new. It's in our code already. And, um, but I want to just say that in, what we don't uh, accent is the high quality of life. And that's uh, section 11-8.1. And that's after 11-8, uh, which is services. And they talk about public facilities such as this. And um, 
Again, it's in our code. They're to underground from the house. Uh, excuse me. Can I wait till they're done? Yeah. Chief, the door closed. Chief, yeah. could you just ask them to Thanks. quiet it? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> it would have been very easy for our town, especially with TDR money, to underground on the East Island since you ripped up everything. <coughs> Um, we have now, and this happened in other towns, and if you look at these uh, concrete holes now, you have that, all this stuff on it that's going to kill us. Um, you could see that by Talbert's building. Um, these should be underground. Uh, there are towns have, who complained about the radiation, whatever that stuff is that they get cancer from, that's in our town. My son just bought a house. The telephone poles in the back of his house are almost in a swimming pool. So, they said, like I said, we this ordinance is on the books. We have to concentrate on the quality, the quality here, and high quality of life with these facilities. And also they talk about with these facilities, um, Channel 88 and the service. Well, I got news for you. There's no sound again. So. I don't know what's going on with this town, but we're not getting the service. We're not getting the quality of life here. This is a beautiful town. Thank you for your comments, Mrs. Nova. And we don't need affordable housing, John. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hearing no other comments, we have a motion and a second. Paul vote. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Councilmember Haffey? Four. Uh, Councilmember Sauber? Four. Council Member Reed. Which number? Nine. Nine. Undergrounding. First reading. Four. Uh, Council Member Fuller's nine. The Chambers. Uh, Vice Mayor Brewer. Four. Mayor Leonard. Four. Passes. Number ten. Consideration and approval of an ordinance on first reading amending chapter amending chapter sixteen of the Town Code to permit payroll deductions for the payment of purchase of accredited service of past military service or police service. An ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending Chapter 16, uh, the Town of Bay Harbor Islands Employees Retirement System of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands Code of Ordinances to permit payroll deductions for the payment of purchases of credit service for past military and or police service, providing for several with you, providing for gratification, providing for an effective date. I'm moving. So, yeah, I'll second. Motion, second, any discussion? Hearing none, Polvo, please. Councilman Reed? Four. Councilman Massaver? Four. Councilman Richard. Uh, Councilman Yaffe? Four. Vice Mayor Brewer? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four. Number 11, please. Consideration and approval of an award contract, BHI 186, for pressure cleaning and sanding of brick pavers in the amount of $42,500 in favor of Cartman Commercial. Services. I'll move it. I'll second it. Motion a second. Um, any discussion? I do. Right. The restaurants that use the um, <coughs> the Petro seating. No, the the no. sitting areas. Yeah, the sitting. They pay a certain amount into the town for the cleaning of the. Do they pay for? Do they pay for the cleaning or do they pay money? Do they pay money? No, they don't. Only if code goes and inspects and sees that is it an inordinate amount of dirt or we have to Correct. come back and service it, then we would require that or ask them to take care, you know, come back on their own and clean. All right, I would it's ask... Their choice, right, to pay or to do it themselves. They could have someone do it. Right. 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 I would ask if you could just make sure that the new company um, look at some of the streets because I, I did not like how the old company was and, and there's in fact some areas already where you can see the grass already growing between the pavers. So I, I hope they take, the new company takes care of that okay. appropriately. Well, you got it. Please. All right. Um, Paul Vogt, please. Uh, Councilman Fuller? Four. Oh, there we go. Councilman Reed? Four. Councilman Sauver? Four. Councilman Yaffe? Four. Vice Mayor Bruder? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four. Tell, tell us what you really think. Number 12. <laughs> Item 12. <laughs> Consideration and approval of an award contract. BHI 187 for custodial services for public buildings in the amount of $65,806. In favor of professional building services. All right, motion, please. Any motion? Last chance. 
Number 12. to clean town hall and to <laughs> clean all the public buildings. We're about to lose it, so. Well, I'm, I'm moving for discussion. Moving for discussion. There, I mean, the question is, what are we currently doing? Do we have a janitorial service? Or now that we have we, we more do. public facilities, we're looking to? No, this, uh, this would include our, we don't, we have to bid every once in a while just to make sure we're getting our. We currently no, have. There is no second. I just had a question. No. Right, I, well, if I can just. I'll bring, second it for discussion. There's a second. Okay, now. But Go ahead. Our current contract is expired. Um, so we went out to bid again. The uh, the contractor that we currently ha that, that was currently doing it, they weren't doing a great job. You asked the police department. We weren't really satisfied with them. Um, we went out to bid. Um, these are the way the bids came back. We don't have an on-staff janitor or cleaning company, so kind of need a cleaning company. So, well, that's what I wanted to ask you. It's, first of all, I'm glad it's not the same company because they really left a lot to be desired. A lot of schmutz, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm OCT, so schmutzy it was schmutz. Yeah. The bathrooms were awful. But you took it out to bid, and this you 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 look you so called so other company, you know other. This, this, these are, we had. This, this is it was advertised. Publicly. No, I know, but I'm saying you you you're, they're satisfied customers. Yes, no, the the company the the company that we're recommending we're very satisfied. We, we would be. Satisfied How much were we? Okay. No, see the problem that happened with the the other company who would. They underbid the last time, so when they started the work, they're like, "Oh, I don't know if I can do this like this." And so, from the very beginning, we didn't have. So, who do we have right now? The old company? No, currently doing this until this contract that hopefully gets awarded, we had the comp the old company. What? Uh, well, just for the manager's edification, I you know, or everyone else for that matter, I mentioned to the manager today for item 11 and 12 that I think it's it's prudent that you mention what's done previously because you know council member Yaffe you know alluded to something that was the same thing I I mentioned today during the day when I called the manager about this item that 11 and 12 you would never know what we currently do you wouldn't know that the previous company was a different company you couldn't know from reading this item from 11 the same thing so I I didn't like the company that that was currently working on on the um, pressure cleaning the the pavers so I, I wouldn't have known that from looking at the agenda item. So please, if staff could just put in a little bit of history, it helps us go a long way. Okay. Especially uh, when you have a time limitation. Agreed. So, and JC, right. let me ask you also, you're, you're comfortable with the, like, as far as security with, with this company? Yes. Another, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're comfortable. There, everybody's going to, you know, background yeah, checks. Standard back, I just want to make sure because we're letting them in places they really normally wouldn't mm -hmm. be okay. the, the, I believe the police department is doing cartwheel. Right. That's it. But I want right. to make sure. Okay. Exactly. All right. So we have a motion, a second. Are you hearing any discussion? All right. Paul, vote, please. Councilmember Fuller. Four. Councilmember Reed. Four. Councilmember Saver. Four. Councilmember Yaffe. Four. Vice Mayor Bruder. Four. Mayor Leonard. Four. Unanimous. Number 14, please. I, item 14, consideration approval of an award of contract to Brute Proof, Brute Proof <laughs> LLC in the amount of 38000 to purchase and separate the police department network hardware from the town hardware. Um, we spoke about this. It's a requirement yeah. to do this. I'll second it. Yeah, I have one question. Um, I noticed that it's a, um, I think it's a refurbished server, the, the computer. Is that, is that something you guys are, are okay with? I'm sure it's something that I remember looking at this somewhere. It's refurbished? I just, yeah, well, it is. That's what the, that's what if the it is, then I would ask, well, Roberto's not here, but yeah, he's, he's the one that would sign off on it. Um, yeah. I mean, it comes with a warrant, a one-year warranty, but I'm just saying, you're going to spend this kind of money, you really want a refurbished, you know, server. I, mean, I, 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 I sent a picture of this to my IT guy. Oh, yeah, what, what did he say? It's the kind of like yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. spot check. How come I don't get that price? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you know, did he say? And, and, um, what did he say? You know, I, first I, I sent him the picture just with the description, yeah. you know, just with the description, and he said, you know, I said, how much would this be? And it's fifty six hundred dollars an hour, you know, an hour on the on the bid there. Uh -huh. And he said he immediately answered that it would be between seven and eight grand. So, um, so you know he said, what he's charging. You. So his response, <laughs> so his response was that's a good price, but it, you know, th uh, one of the questions that he asked were, were the drives <coughs> refurbished as well. Yeah. Are so is that Re that's Roberto, right? Yeah. yeah. What. Roberto, 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 Roberto. 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 Excuse me, hi, come on up. 
are the are the no, drives no, up here. No, 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 no. Up here. Yeah, yeah. You're you're a Nazi. <laughs> Name an address for the record. No, no, no. no, no. So no. What? Are the drives are the drives refurbished in this you know in this thing as well? No, not the drives. Just the uh, the system. Sometimes, basically, this is done to save some money. Right. Uh, this this refurbished server still has three four year warranty. Right. On it. So whatever happens to it, Dell's still fully responsible for it. Right. Right. So. Yeah, so uh, it I mean, he said it was a good. He said it was a very good deal. So. Yeah, I don't mind a good deal. I just want to make sure that we're getting. Just clarify call. then, because this says one year warranty. It says one year warranty. Saying three to four year. No, warranty. we we will get to uh, three year warranty on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, All right. That's and that's and good. also, this was publicly bid out. We went out to bid. Oh. No, I know. I'm just. Right. My question is, it's great to get a, a good price. It's you want to get the quality too. So. All right. Um, hearing no discussion. Povo, please. Councilman Miyaffe? Four. Councilman Sauber? Four. Councilman Reed? Four. Councilman Fuller? Four. Vice Mayor Bruder? Four. Mayor Leonard? Four. Unanimous. Fifteen? Mm. Uh, consideration and approval of a proposed program for the town's 70th anniversary celebration. I was asked to look into this about fireworks. I contacted uh, Gucci and Zambelli. Um, I worked through Bal Harbor and the company they used. Zambelli has a is who they used and they have uh, offices down here in uh, Florida. Um, to put on an event that would be, you know, something halfway decent, <coughs> I wrote, we, uh, I looked up what I thought we would need. Fireworks, fencing, barricades, some ge a generator or temporary lighting, uh, food trucks for some kind of, uh, some food to give to, uh, to have, police department personnel, bus transportation that would be requiring, you know, four, at least four small minibuses to, you know, ferry people back and forth. Um, portalettes, some giveaways. I have the DJ, I didn't really have that targeted in, but it's from all accounts, that's not going to be a great expense. But it's roughly $50,000 to do this event, oh, um, nice. give or take. All right. most, of my, most of my hard numbers, or my pretty good numbers, a little less than what I budgeted for. So, but I would say that it could, could it's exactly go up or down. Yeah, and, that's it's exactly how, and that's for how many people? It's for uh, a minimum of 800 to 1,000. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I have an idea in yeah. reference to this. Um, well, I guess for discussion, do we need a motion? All right, I'll move it. Um, second. I'll second it. Um, you know, I, I know in years past, we've had events that were actually at least partially underwritten by sponsors. And I think, um, you know, I certainly support the notion of having a 70th anniversary party and it's very nice having the, uh, the fireworks and everything like that, but comparing ourselves to Bell Harbor is not an accurate comparison because they have, um, they have uh, resort tax funds, which we don't. So any money that we spend comes out of our operating budget. And uh, what I would suggest is that, you know, we do make an investment in our 17th anniver 70th anniversary, um, but I would say let's go, let's try to s establish a fund and then ha like do a match. Let's say, you know, either the people in the business district or, you know, the Parks and Recreation Department or, or someone can go out and solicit funds from private donations and let's try to raise 25 grand and then we'll match 25 grand. I already, I already have one or two people interested in sponsoring. Yeah, it shouldn't you know, be hard. I'm sure there's like a thousand dollars, you know, something to start. Yeah, or with. or you know, just have a schedule of sponsorships. Okay. We can have like a major sponsor and minor sponsors, and I'm sure a lot of developers yeah, I don't, in the town, broad, some hotels. The Broad Foundation or, might want to yeah. kick in some bucks. It, they have to be asked at least. Right. Well, I, I think, well, I, I, don't, I agree with you. I think we should probably... Developers. Yeah. That's what I said. I, I think what, what we could do is, you know, allow the manager to to make those calls and to... Okay, but well, let's... You know. but, but, yeah, but... If he doesn't get it, then what, what well, do you want to do? What kind of on a tight timeline? Well, no, I mean, I, you, you have to... 
make a determination tonight right. whether we're going to proceed with this or not, right. whether whether we raise funds or not. So right. That's what it's saying. a commitment, and if we are able to raise mm -hmm. some money to offset right. this, right. and have sponsors, that's great. But if not, it's going to proceed. But also, right. 800 to 1,000 people, I mean, we're hoping we could get it higher than that. Right. So we've got to watch the budget along those lines. Obviously, the fireworks it's it's right. doesn't cost more for more people to watch it, but it's, you know, to bring more people out. Food so. and, and supplies and everything else does. It would be strict, it. you know, it would be a strict Bay Harbor Island resident to get anything well like as a giveaway but but yeah but people still show up but some of it just what we do with the uh no no it'll be a little stricter <laughs> no but am i right or wrong what no what i think we should do is is restrict access to the island that you can't get there unless if you have you show well, your we, you. yeah we can't if you're doing this on the causeway aren't you closing the causeway closing aren't you closing the causeway yeah, we right. can do so that. at that point you're restricting access to the town. Yeah, I think we can. People from coming in from the other side. Are we the, we, the we, whole we, causeway, all four lanes? Yeah, yes. we're closing that. That's we, funny. We, no, I know it sounds it sounds drastic, but we've done it quite often, regular on a regular it basis. Well, yeah, it, it does happen. <laughs> we do do it for maintenance on the bridge and for other reasons. We've no, I just, closed it down. I, I just think that that yeah, but that was two in the morning. We should be stringent <laughs> in regards to restricting it to residents because it's something that that to have the privilege of of being there and have this event and we're going to spend this kind of money we don't want to deny residents the ability no, no. to so that's the uh, we're, no we're agreeing yeah. to restrict the causeway access in other words people coming in from the east coming into causeway access to the party to bay harbor residents but when we you said before restricting access into bay harbor that's no, no, no 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 to the causeway island causeway. i'm sorry I to the actual it. event they can enter the town but yeah. but to the actual yeah. event. Yeah. Will there be any parking for residents? There's not enough space. We would, that's what the buses were for. Yeah. Would right. have people walk, uh -huh. You could either walk or would have a series of shuttles. four, four I, shuttles also, dropping you off. Yeah, if there's no, and then if, you, if we're cutting off the causeway, we can have on, you know, up and down, it can conquer right. all Just people walking. There's yeah. no car, there are no cars. But we could, but, but the actual shuttle bus can go around the entire town and pick people up, and that's the whole that point. The that, plan. that theoretically, you could actually walk outside of your home or your building, and, and, and you can either walk or you could take the shuttle, and the shuttle will take, will have trips around until right. the event's over. So, and, and, and that's what Bell Harbor did, you know, and, and it worked fine. Yeah. And I would like to know how are we going to restrict this because I think that's going to be extremely difficult. Well, don't use the word restricted. How we're going to monitor? That. Monitor. Well, I think well you try to do it the same way you do the annual picnic. I mean, you, you have to have, have a, You have to price. come in and get your ticket with proof of ID, and usually you present the ticket as you're walking in right. and you get your wristband. It's easy you get your wristband. Just, you do it like, like if you have a wristband, then you're entitled to. Right. It's it's not hard. You have you're entitled to food right. if you come in and you. Say you were a guest. I mean, I'm, I haven't really thought it this far, but if you come in with a guest who doesn't have the wristband, <laughs> they can, maybe they can come and watch, but they can't have they can't have food. They can't have anything that we're giving away. Well, that's never the people stand there long. Right. If they, you know, when people buy, when people come and get pick up their tickets, if, look, if they have four people living in the house, three people, they get those three tickets. If they want to invite, yeah, I don't. I think we should. But not the other person. That's fine. Yeah, I think we need to. We can limit that part out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I Surrender. Yeah. Now the only thing I would say though is we've got to, you know, we have to figure out whether or not we're budgeting and what we're budgeting tonight. As far as sponsorship, I, I love the idea, except I think we have to before we start speaking to sponsors, I have to see what kind of I think we'd have to say what kind of publicity we're trying to get because that encourage, <coughs> encourages uh, sponsors. If you're if you're just keeping for Bay Harbor residents and not publicizing it anywhere else, where you're not going to get you know, try and get a story out of in the Herald, well, nobody reads the Herald, but some history in the Herald or, or something on local news or something like that, you tend not to get a lot of corporate sponsors. But if you're going to try and get some kind of little news story on and you mention that when you're trying to get a sponsor, it helps get a little bit more money. All right. okay. So I think you have to have that before you talk to them. That's a good idea, too. Yeah. All right. Question, since yes. this is in January, are we doing the annual 5K, 10K walk run? Yeah, it's the year. same day. Same in the morning. It's the same day? Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Okay, because I haven't seen anything about uh, that yet. Maybe I missed it, but I just curious. Run to the festival. Right. Be a long <laughs> Different time. Yes, the, and that's a, that's another one. We don't close. No, we do you close. Know, the, uh, and we get sponsors for that, right? Not anymore. Well, yeah, not, not anymore. Not anymore. We weren't doing the last couple. No, of no, Monday. Yeah. We just budgeted. Is it a Monday? And, no, Sunday. 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 January twenty second. January twenty first. Second. The twenty second is a Sunday. I hope it is. I don't think so. So right, we have a public comment. All right, so, so yeah, there's one. We have public Leo? comment. Leo? Leo? We, we are going to have that available. Is it, so is it a Monday? It must be the, and maybe this is a typo.
Good evening again, Leo Cornero at uh, 1059 3rd Street. Um, I was looking at the details of the breakdown of the cost. I think the fireworks alone were like twenty thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yes. And so the cost of the whole party is around fifty thousand, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, look, as much as I love fireworks, I grew up in Orlando, you know, as a kid, and I moved over here after I graduated from Florida State. Um, Go no. I know, right? Go no. So, <laughs> right. I'll tell you what. Yeah, $20,000, I think it just sounds like a lot of money. Um, and, you know, um, Council Member um, Kelly Reed earlier, she said, she said the phrase of discipline portfolio management, and that kind of rings a bell with, like, discipline management of I mean, twenty thousand dollars for fireworks just sounds like a lot. I mean, I live on Ninety Third Street, and now traffic for the pickup of the school is on that street. And I think that twenty thousand dollars could be better spent on um, striping that street now, because if you're a kid and you're walking through that street, there's all this extra traffic there now. I'm sure that's probably in the plans that JC may fill me in later. Um, another idea, maybe get some of that twenty thousand dollars. We would do like a spring break camp, right? Sometimes spring, spring breaks out, parents still have to work. Maybe they don't go on vacation. Maybe we provide something. We I don't know. We for, have, we have, we we have, have perfect. Well, I'm, I saw legit. I closed all my house on uh, February 18th. Congratulations. So I was, quite right. a, you're you're going to have a lot of great numbers. Right. $25,000. Perfect. I guess just the main point is like $20,000 sounds like a lot. And at $30,000, I think we have a heck of a party. And I think we could save the fireworks, especially coming off of New Year's. We're probably going to see fireworks on December 31st. And then seeing it at three weeks later, it's not going to be such so nostalgic. nostalgic. But either way, thank you guys right, for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, we have John Vetter. And uh, hold on, Mr. Manager, just so you know the the clock. Yes, absolutely. Casey's, uh, John Vetter, one zero three five zero West Bay Harbor Drive, Bay Harbor Islands, Florida. Um, I believe property tax bills are coming out this month tomorrow yeah and I just want to remind you that fireworks are literally tax dollars going up in smoke I'd rather see it used for like a men's room on this floor or almost any other type of thing if it was a hundredth anniversary maybe 75th anniversary maybe but I think it's a poor timing to Think about having tax dollars go up in smoke. Thank you. All right, thank you for your comments. I have a question about the numbers. Um, how many people usually come to the picnic, more or less? It's about a thousand, and the uh, eighty-five hundred dollars that we budgeted would be in keeping with um, that amount of that kind of food. It wouldn't be that type of food. It would be something less, you know, more like smaller things to 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 eat, but. So it wouldn't be, it's enough to handle 800, at least 800 people. And, uh, and also keep in mind that the concept of doing this in January was to go inside with the anniversary of the school also, that there was supposed to be a conjunction of, of working together with the school and the Broad family. So, you know, there's some synergy supposedly behind this, not just that we're doing our own anniversary, but the school's anniversary as well. So. I'm, I'm having a hard time just imagining the logistics of that many people getting out there, you know, getting shuttled out. I mean, so it, the, the causeway will be closed all the way uh, to, like, East Bay Harbor Drive. You're going to close off Cane Concourse as well, no, somebody said. No. Cane Concourse said, no. will be open. Just the, the west. Island. Yeah, the causeway just, island. And it would be from, like... From West Bay Harbor. Uh, I'm sorry, West, West, Broadview, West, Broadview, West Broadview. But maybe maybe down to the Actually, terrace. So you could ride your so bicycle so over at the bridge will be open and yes. is is that yes. a problem? Yeah, or? Yeah. No, I'd probably keep I mean what I recommend is you keep one I mean since we're closing off the causeway, close off one of the streets, make one of them uh, two way and that way you have a pedestrian so all the pedestrians are on one side because we're encouraging thousand, potentially a thousand or more people to walk from yeah, I just can't imagine. Over. I just have a bait I mean what you see here is a basic plan. Right, I'm I just said this is something later on, but I'm just saying it's, you know, trying to tell a thousand people to walk from East Island on the Wait. one uh, bike path, or, you know, that's not going to work. I mean, I, I, I just like to think that our manager and our chief can, can handle this. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'd like to think, Ron, you can, you can make this work logistically? I'm pretty sure we can. All right, yeah. well, and uh, I'll take you for your word. So, all right, um, we have a motion a second, and can we have a poll vote on it? And, and with the amendment that we are also going to solicit 
um, sponsors. Yes. And the manager will work on that too. So budget so up to fifty thousand. Up, up to fifty and runs. That you said. I would ask so just that. make it fifty-five just in case, but I don't. Do you want to keep it fifty? That's I, I said, let's do it fifty and okay. get some sponsors. We're, we're, you can always come back with a change order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Not. Okay. Well, well, that's not no. what I, that wasn't my amendment, just for the record, oh, oh, okay? Right. My amendment was that we go 25, and then we force everybody to raise 25. Yeah. But just just for the record, yeah. that was my amendment. Okay. Not go 50 and then try to raise more money on top of that. So the, the, prob the problem is, is if we, if you came up, it, legally, if they came up a little bit short, you, you know, what do you do? You cancel every, you know, yeah, you want to be able uh, to... That wasn't the amendment. I just, just it was just a encouraging. That encouraging. It wasn't even yeah. an amendment. It's just to encourage Encourage raising, right? Source. Isaac, I mean... Yeah. No, actually, no. I, I wanted to save taxpayers money. And oh, I let me tell you, the only comments that we had on this were against this. So, uh, just for the record, because of the comments that were made, I'm going to vote against it. Because I was really undecided either way, but, the, you know, if 100% of the public comments were against it, uh, I'm against it. Right, but then I don't understand your, your amendment, Isaac, which is that if we, we're going to plan this, but if we don't raise X amount of dollars, we don't go forward. Right. If, it was, if, it were, if we were voting on $25,000 and then raising another $25,000, you know, I would vote. All right. How about this idea, right, the then? The problem, though, is in, on November 13th, it's really hard. I, I, I understand what you're doing, but it's really difficult to do that. You can't go ahead and plan an event for two months down what? the road right. with a contingency that if you don't raise enough money, it's not going to go forward because you're going to make a commitment and have to pay deposits to this. How about if we approve 25000 for the party, and if we can't raise the other twenty-five for the fireworks, then we just have a party without fireworks? Yeah, that, that's a good option. I mean, I'm fine with that, but how, how much in advance do you have to re yeah, you know, that's, that's reserve the fireworks? That's all. Uh, if I don't do this now, it's, they need at least six yeah, weeks to Right, so if you don't commit to together. doing it, then the fireworks are out, which is fine if that's the, you know, the sense of the council. But we have fireworks this and isn't no something food. that you we can eat before you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the draw. I mean, Val Barber theoretically spent what uh, three hundred quarter of a million to three hundred thousand. We're not doing that comparison. No, we're not. No. They no, we're not. I mean, we're was spending seventy fifth anniversary. Or I, even then, I, 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 no, I, I couldn't justify. Seventy fifth anniversary. Even then, that made no sense. No, but I, you know, but I think. So, let me ask you. I this. think that no, but I was going to say that you know I think that the fact that we've passed our military rate with the, the lowest military rate in nine years, you know, it's not as if we're raising taxes in order to pay for this. This is something that we knew up until last year that we wanted to do something. No, now no, it's no. This this is a budget, budget impact. Twenty eight thousand five hundred. That's what we thought it was. No, I, I remember. Say anything about Jordan? This doesn't say what the budget impact is on. Oh no, I know that. But right. it's something that we've discussed for about a year, and now we're yeah. kind of like at the end of the year. So the only reason that we're doing this this year is because it's the 70th birthday of the school. I mean, we don't. No, 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 the town. Uh, the, the school also is having its 60th. They're 50. 60th. 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 So we want. To, but my question is, don't you usually do 25, 50, 75? I mean, what yeah, makes like that, right. what makes 70? We did 60. Ron, did you say you needed six weeks in advance for the fireworks? Because they, they, they need to. Okay. But that still gives you a month, right? Yeah, to come I'm up to see if we get the sponsorship. And then if we got the sponsorship, we have the fireworks. If we don't get the sponsorship in the next month, then we just have a party. Everything else. I got to be honest with you. Too much money. I think. Why can't, you know, 25, 50, those are gold, you know, those are special birthdays. If, what is the school doing for its 60th birthday? That there, you say there's sending... No, yeah, but because... Is just a matter of, this is a lot of money for something. Well, this <coughs> is the thing. We're, we're doing it in, supposedly in conjunction with the school. Right. Okay. But I don't see in any of our planning and any of our celebrations that we're... Like what contribution? No. What contribution the school is doing? What are they doing? How are we celebrating this together? If you read... And 70th is not... That important, 75, I think, is a little, you know. But even I'm that number, I'm here's, opposed to whatever. No, here's, uh, I'm going to vote against it. Here's, here's the problem I have is that even if it was, even if we were at 75, okay, regardless, the problem I have here is goes, we go back to, we had budgeted 28.5. Did I have two copies? Yeah, there was always the talk about fireworks coming out, but the budget we had put 28.5. Here we are at the last minute, according to you, as far as when we have to order the fireworks and everything else, and we're essentially doubling the budget. That's, there's a problem. Well, there's you know what, honestly, you, you asked me to plan for something for our anniversary, the 70th. This is what it will cost. 
you're not I mean, if the original the original idea was to have something at the community center more of like a I don't want to say a cocktail party kind of a thing where you know me looking at pictures and a lot of memorabilia okay. from the town and um, I think I was pretty clear there was a lot of you know they had already started down that road and were well down it in coordination with the with uh, the, school. the school and what was the budget on that there and really was the wasn't I think the bu <laughs> no actually no it was I, own, I had only budgeted ten thousand dollars for that yes. and the, I know the the uh, bustle family were going to be making some contribution to brought and how much when what part was the school playing you know I hear the school the school the school well the, we had we had several meetings with the school principal at the time Ms. Rodriguez and with the Broad Foundation and with uh, Regina, the community center, we have pl we were planning a different type of event. The school was doing in January their own event where they had the children participate. They were we were going to have the kids from the media center do some uh, videos with our old um, older <coughs> residents that may have some historical perspective on the town. So we were going down a totally separate, different road. So it, this is not what we're talking about at this point. Right. Right. So last meeting, the fireworks were brought into it, and I, you're going to have you're going to if you're going to close the causeway and have invite people out there, it was it was an event driven right. thing. It's too close to April, honestly, or to the town. Hey picnic that I wouldn't if we're not gonna if we're gonna not do something a little out of the unusual well, can, we, would, well, can we, we do a full street party on King Kong well, we're, doing the, we're doing the um, the 5k on that day right. so mm -hmm. why don't you just you know we're, you know just well you, combine you, it I'm saying we agree yeah, with yeah, just like a street like party a block off part of King Kong just do a little bit more food trucks robust. up and down we don't need no, fireworks in the daytime because uh, yeah, but it's, it's early one. in the morning. That, <laughs> that, end, that event ends at 9 o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. People are not coming out. I guess that could be a, or that could make a difference, right? right. But, right. but you, start, you start the main party at 10 to 2 or something. It's too much because it's too late. You know, the, the April's too late? Why? No, no, we don't want to do it. Because the anniversary is in, in 17. They're pushing it back to January 18th. The, the anniversary is this year. A daytime uh, street people. party on King Cup Course, block off part of block off King Cup Course, food trucks up and down the whole thing. We can do something there that would be really magnificent. We, you don't need fireworks in the daytime. You know, music, food, get people out there. I think that's a probably easier you know, way and a lot cheaper. You know, honestly, we missed the we missed the anniversary. <laughs> well, it's this year. You know, we can't like do this retro. It's not this year. Well, it's this year. It is 2017. This year. Is this year? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, well, I mean, we, we kind of missed the boat on this one. Okay. Yeah. Well, we did it, but it's, if you want to do it, if you want to do the party, we got to do it a little more inexpensively. Oh, I mean. So let's take a vote. Yeah. Now, I, I need a clarification because. The, the, motion was made. The, motion was made. The, vote, the motion was made by no but I don't know what the motion is the motion was ma made by Vice Mayor Bruder seconded by Councilman Sauber right so uh, what I'll, is I'll the motion draw, I'll withdraw it I'll withdraw I'll so draw a second we have to do nobody we don't have to do anything no exactly. I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. that, it would be appropriate it. to do something no that's up it's to a us. budgeted item so it's we're actually in, in the so we're not so it is we'll roll it over the we'll roll it over to the 75th anniversary right we'll roll it <laughs> so we're not going to do anything for our 75th anniversary we can we're put it food yeah. so like we can do a trap neuter release event oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow no i mean i think i think we should do something i mean okay we did agree to an appropriate money in the budget to do something. We don't have to right spend now it. There's no motion in the seconds. So. All right. Well, all right. So we're going to do nothing. All right. All right. Number 16. Item 16, approval of a change order, the final change order, 28, in favor of M&J Construction, Pinellas County, in the matter of $187,368.10. This was to finish the painting of all the steel that we put in, the initial steel. This started out over, God, it's over a year that we've been negotiating with them. The original uh, request was for $330,644 uh, through various um, negotiations. That was reduced to $187,000, the, the price that you see there. Well, you don't have to explain it more. Just, I okay. just want to clarify. You just say one. the word final, final, right? This is it. This is it. Yeah, I'll, I'll move it for discussion. Sorry. Second. All right, motion, a second, discussion. And so also, you know, we've gone back and forth. I mean, you know, for everyone's clarification out there, we started off 11 to 12 million. We're up close to 18. We've had discussions at nauseum. 
We looked at who we could hold accountable and basically come up with nothing. We tried. So this was just a case of concrete work, hides a lot of things, and uh, in discussions with the manager the other day, we were talking about to really <coughs> seek uh, you know, what's going on underneath the, the concrete and correct me in, in the jargon. That would be like a million dollar uh, destructive estimate. Test, destructive, destructive testing yeah, is please. very extensive to do what we so it's, it's easy on. in hindsight to look back now and say that we should have spent that million and, and then it would have just told us that we needed to spend 18 million. So I, I'd like to say that, um, so this will be probably the final. No, 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 no probably. But I need just the final discussion because I think there's a perception out there, you know, I've even mentioned it a few times, like what are we doing? Are we taking legal action? That was mentioned once. So this sort of puts the current bridge to bed. There's no legal action. Nobody's going to be held <coughs> accountable or throw in any money. This is the last change order. Well, we don't, That's that. We, we'll Until that, we'll, we redo the bridge. We'll, we'll leave that quite the, you know, all the other questions open, but it's because I don't want to put anything on record that we're 100% yeah, certain of anything else. I will just simply say, from my understanding, this is the final cost, this is the final change order. We're done with the costs. Yes. Right. Okay, that's that's all I want to know on this one. That's yeah, I don't I don't want to say I, I don't exactly want to say I where, where is this money coming from? Like where's all this money? The, the seventieth anniversary. No, no, no. <laughs> it's the Causeway Reserves, right? Yes. Yeah. So. All right. So a motion, a second. Any other discussion? Hold up. Councilmember Miyaffe. Four. Councilmember Sauver. Against. Councilmember Reed. No choice but four. Councilman Fuller. Again, no choice but four, same thing. Except I'm in my no Well, you have a choice. Vice Mayor Bruder. No, we don't we get sued. <laughs> we right. Ditto. Okay. I need to clarify. Oh, four. Pair <laughs> letter. Ditto doesn't mean <laughs> court all. <laughs> Reluctantly four. Okay. All right, Reluctantly number 17. Four. Discussion requested by Council Member Yaffe regarding fees charged by the building, tom building department for change of contractor. Um, did you want to? Sure. I, this was brought to my attention by a contractor in town who had commented on the fact that we're charging 50% of the original permit fee if you want to change your contractor. Now, this provides our um, resolution that we amended and adopted last year, uh, provides for, you know, a building permit for new construction, it's 3% of the job cost. So, you know, if you're spending $800,000, it's whatever, 20 some odd thousand dollars, whatever it is. And if you simply are changing your contractor, <coughs> that could be 10,000. It was related to me that a couple of people in town who were doing work on the um, West Island ended up having to spend $4,000 just to change their contractor. So, you know, I, I think this slipped by us, you know, last year. And Ron, you know, has the history of this. This, this it's type of fee has been around for many, many years, but it's just increased. And Marlene, um, provided us with a memo that shows what our, you know, neighboring communities are charging. And it's really just a ministerial uh, thing. You know, I mean, you change your, your contractors for any number of reasons. You're unhappy with them. They go bankrupt. They walk off the job, whatever, you know. They disappear and to have to spend thousands of dollars just to do that doesn't make any sense. What, yeah. what changes do we have to I can tell you, I administratively, know, right. in order to change the contract. We need to change the resolution. It's right. not an administration. No, but no, no, I think it's asking what does the town the administration do? Like, what is the building department? What expense are they incurring by me going in there and saying, okay, I'm taking out contractor A and I'm putting in contractor I, E? No, 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 very little, very little. Very Two little. seconds. So then let's make the fee very little. Right. I think it's. A, I'm, I think it should be $150, which is what was suggested. Bell Harbor charges $150, Sun Isles $100, North Miami Beach $100, you know. $150 Can I just say, just so you know how it, how it got this way, back in 1994 when this was originally approved, it reads, change of contract to 30% of permit fee with a minimum of $40. So the permit fees back then were very low, very low. So 
in, 19, in 2004, it was changed. It, it, when it was revised, it stated 30%. All right, again, it was, it was, there was no, 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 it's a no brainer. No, no, make, make it a, you know what, make it a hundred. Sunnyvale's Beach is a hundred dollars. I don't think we have. hundred fine. So yeah, bring a resolution in January. For a hundred dollars. Okay, okay. There you go. okay. Done. All right, number 19. Okay, we're not the uh, Item 19, discussion, um, and really just your feedback on the, the draft agreement from the Miami uh, Dade School Board. Jason Why is it only two years? That's the, 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 the standard. Standard. Years? I think it, it has a, a, a renewal period. It does have a renewal. I'm just yeah. asking. Well, it's a weird renewal period. It's like, you know, you've got renewal, but only, then you can extend another two years if both sides agree to it, which... I mean, that's the, that type of renewal it's, period. I know. It's, 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 Sunny Isles Beach contract. It was very, very close to Sunny Isles, which, you know, depending on who you speak to, it's, uh, it actually has controlled, or according to the school board, their growth in po student population has leveled off. Um, I'm not sure, We're, and this is modeled pretty close to that, some changes. One of the things that we wanted to make sure that we got in there was that if some, something came to our attention, that we could pass it on and it, it wouldn't be fluffed off. Um, so if, we, if something comes to our attention, we can bring it up to them. Or the concerns, obviously, of the council were that relating to them is we just don't want everybody to think there's nothing going on and that you are going to address what's the issue here. And how do we... They will, there's reporting, monthly reporting. Yeah, I know, but, but one of the things is it says that we're, they're going to use LexisNexis, and they, but then they say they have no financial obligation. There's the assumption that we're going to pay for the program. We are no, paying for it. We are flat we out paying for it. There's no, no, I know that, but I'm that saying... Was that was discussed. No, 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 no I, I understand that, but what, other, other than the program... Council meeting? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but other than the program... Yes. The, the actual staffing, of that's on their side. Yes. I just want to make it abundantly clear. We will train them. It doesn't say that in there. Yeah. No, but it does talk about it. they're not going to spend any money. Yeah, on it. it says that. that. The problem there becomes if they do want to say, look, it cost us this number of dollars for, they right. have an argument, say, we had to spend X number of hours and our people need to pay. I think yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a problem. Here. It just needs to be clear. It just needs to be clarified that, okay. that the staffing, as far as verifying, is on their end and we don't bear that cost. The reason, the reason it's written like that in Sunny Isles, Sunny Isles agreed to pay for. Now, I know what they're... People, and would not, and this is why that language... But I don't want the well, way we'll it up anyways. i got to tell you, there's a few issues here. I mean, yeah. you know, first of all, you know, we're picking up a bill with no cap. There is absolutely no limitation here whatsoever. If they want to keep running it, running it, running it, if you got somebody on it, we're paying for it. Um, I have a problem with that. Second, it, it just simply says that in the, if they find somebody, when they do the mailings, and the mailing's going to cost us probably, you know, Four, five, six, seven thousand dollars just for the certified return right. receipt mailings each time they do it. Right. They've already done that. Nice right. yeah, I'm saying each time, but we're going to be picking up the cost every time they do that. So they do it once, twice, three times. You're looking at five, six grand every time. But the fact of the matter is, you've got a scenario here where it simply just says, and we know this, that they're just going to go back to the standard program of what their normal policy as to how they want to handle case by case. Well, they haven't been doing a great job on that up to now. Yeah. Um, and we're just picking up a bill just to go back to the same system we're at. Currently, uh, yeah, go ahead. There's a uh, under Section Two funding. It says the school board shall obtain consent from the parent parents guardians prior to conducting a search. So what if the parent guardian says no, and yeah. then you're done? That's it. I and, mean, and that came up at the meeting. Yeah. And we, we were we asked that same question, and that's a red flag for them. So then they they bring them in and they interview them further, and and uh, and they it's they're focused on and. But I mean, so it kicks off an additional meeting with the school. Yeah, but, I, no, but the problem is even there, it doesn't say there's actually any enforcement. They're not sharing the information with us. That's one thing, we, and they know they can't, but I right. understand that. But at the same time, is we're essentially paying for something on an unlimited basis with no knowledge of anything's actually happening. What's going to end up coming back to, you know, what, what we're going to get out of our money? And the only thing we can do is after 60 days say, you know what, I mean, give 60 days and say, we don't want to do it, but you've already spent the money and we have no idea whether you've taken students out that aren't supposed to be here. An additional so thing. I'd still rather look at our earlier agreement. You know, we, we were talking about last time putting them on notice that they were in breach of the contract. And I think that might be the stronger way. Let them, you know, let them have to spend some time and money trying to get the, the wrong students out of there. I mean, on a side thing, just another small thing, you know, as a, I don't want to create a hassle for our real residents. You've got to hear, hear that they're going to have to come in and bring their original documents between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. on the week that they provide. You've got a lot of working parents 
that are not able to do it between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. They're not going to take a day off of work. Well, when they bring their when they bring their kids, they they have to register their kids during that time. But I'm saying that a lot of them are 7:30, 8 a.m. And I can understand the school doesn't want parents sticking around a large number of them right at drop off. <coughs> There's a time between that and eight and 9 a.m. where they, they can do it. They, I, yeah, 11 they, to 4, that doesn't work. First of all, they can do it by you know, kindergarten, first grade on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, there's many different ways that they can do it so that they, it, it's all a matter if they want. And as far as the mailing goes, I mean, they mail out at the beginning of the year anyway. I, so are we bearing the cost of their mailings? Mm -hmm. No, not, yeah. Yes or going no. to this, it says they have an argument for yes. They can just, they don't have to do their own. They can have, I mean, they can just use ours and we have to pay for it. Now the, uh, and, and if it didn't come across it, when we went to the meeting, the only, the only thing we were going to be providing them was access to the LexisNexis. You know, why, you know, what says that they are going to comply with the terms of this agreement when they violated our original agreement? You know, I, I think we're just, you know, they're just kind of, they're passing the ball back to us, um, you know, f to do work that they really should be doing and they should be funding, et cetera, et cetera. I say we go back to the original agreement and make them comply with the original agreement. And if they don't, let's, that's, you know, let's saying a few minutes ago, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, I, and I don't appreciate as a council member seeing like a new agreement when there's no update on the violation of the old agreement. How are they on that? Where, you know, what, where are we at with that? that that's this, what I'm this, more interested this in. This one is really to... This does not... All, the, this all this information well, that they're going to provide for us is going to be non-detailed information that's probably public, you know, public information eventually anyway. We're just, you know what I'm saying? It's... Ron, I know you were making a valid, you know, you were making a, a nice attempt here, but the problem with this is it, it doesn't do anything. And that's exactly, I think, what Isaac's saying as well, is that, you know, the fact of the matter is, even if they stay to the letter of the agreement to this, the problem is, even if they stay, stay to it, it says specifically that they will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis and evaluate individually. <clears throat> that means nothing. That means they can take a look at it and say, you know what, we're going to waive this, and we're going to so, waive the next, and we're going to waive the So what, is the what does the agreement that is in force say with respect to verification of the student population, if anything. Does it? it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't. So, so, so we can talk about this over and over again, you know, for months and years at a time about address verification. We don't like this agreement. I mean, what, what, what do you on the council want? What, what are you asking specifically the school board to do to, to meet your goal of address verification? And I think it is important to make sure that the students who are in this school are within this district. You don't like this program. What is it that you want? It's, Josh, it's okay to say that they're in violation of the current agreement because there's more than 1,200 students at the school and they're capped at 1,200. What is it that we are actually asking so, the school board to do? Okay, so the first thing and is... And how do you want them to do it? So, well, the first thing is what, what we have to agree what is, what, what is a resident. A resident is somebody who lives here full time who is their homestead is here because there's a lot of parents who rent an apartment or have you can't say that their home is here. There are a lot of people who live in re who live full time in rental housing. It's not no, a I don't mean that. I mean people who you have mean a primary residence. Primary primary residence. It's it's not a perfect agreement, but it's it's. You I, have I to think start from I think somewhere. you need to bring it back to them, and clarify those things that okay, we no, all no, know. No. We. I mean, right. no, look, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I mean, I think we go back to, it goes back to what Bob was saying, but here's the answer. It's that the, I think we just need to move to enforce the earlier agreement. The earlier agreement limits the number of students, so in order for them to comply with what they've already signed, they have to take action, and under their own rules, they have to give, they have to give preference to students that are actually within this district. So their only way, their only way they can comply with the earlier signed agreement is to do this filtering out themselves at their own cost, their own time, and actually process okay, it. So properly. remind me, how many students are at the K-8 now? 1,450. Okay, so, so. No, 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 no,
you're we we rely on that school for our programming and a lot of stuff and and that agreement you referred to as the joint use that that's that joint use agreement right. and so they're gonna you you're scared you're gonna lock us out well listen you, you it could don't you know no, no, they believe me they need us yeah. just as bad as you know we need them i i don't think you can approach it from that defensive passive perspective you need you know you, you, we need to jump up and down and if we have to file a, like uh, some type of injunction to prevent them from building that extra 2800 square feet which i guarantee you will be filled up with brand new kids and they'll come back with statistics that there's 1600 kids in that yeah. before you turn around i can guarantee you if we have to you know i mean i think this council should take the position that enough is enough you know it's hard to believe that we're talking about another government agency a county a county entity like we're talking about a utility company or, or a vendor or a private company but you know that we have to go after so um, you know do you think this can be accomplished politically I mean and formally that you know so so the school board works for the county commission right no no, 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 no. the school board is autonomous so the school board is its own separate entity okay so so we go to the state you know who no, so who do they the report board. to the, first thing, the first school thing, back board to, for, hold on one second did, like, Craig and Frank did you guys have the conversation with the school board I think after the last meeting we talked about the fact of having a conversation with them with regard no, to the because, um, the first thing they were supposed to do is provide the draft and my and they did that I looked at the draft I make a suggestion <coughs> excuse me I'm losing my voice but um, I suggest Josh or any one of the council give Ron the things the provisions that you would want to have added to make this a better agreement uh, I think that it's time for a new agreement and a good agreement and a strong agreement. So the fact that they gave us this as a draft, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't mean it has to be the be all or end all. I don't want to travel on an old agreement that we have to litigate. Uh, if we can get the terms that would make the council feel better, uh, because a lot of the agreement is okay. That's my but I disagree. Right. I respectfully, I disagree because if they're not, I mean, if, if we're not enforcing the previous agreement and they're not, well, they're not complying with it, what good is any other future agreement? You have to make sure that someone sticks to their word. And if they're not sticking to their word the first time, it's foolish for us to go back and say, we'll create another agreement because you, you may, you may keep to it, you may not, but we'll keep to our side. But, this, and, but, I'm, but I'd like to have that conversation. I think well, what we talked about is having conversation notice, put them on notice that they are in violation of it. If they want to comply and fix it themselves so they're no longer in violation, we can work with them. If but, not, we may have to. Let, let me do this. Let me do this. Why don't we try to let's give it one shot and then and, and if we can't resolve anything by January then then why don't we take it to the next the next level or, I mean let me let me do this let me have a meeting with the manager and meet with with the superintendent and and with our school board member and see if maybe we can um, allow them to to kind of get their house in order a little bit so we're on the same page because I uh, you know when I spoke to the assistant superintendent prior to the last meeting um, she assured me that they were working on this agreement back then. So before we showed up and they all showed up to the council meeting, I was on the assumption that they were actually had the agreement that they were going to bring with them. Now they showed up with something that literally is a photocopy from Sunday Isles Beach. I mean, it literally is. Uh, well, I, 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 I got it. With all due respect, she came in here. She had any agreement or any um, idea that she was going to be amendable to anything. She wouldn't have come in here the way that she came in here right. and have been so aggressive towards all of us. But she did not, she, under no circumstances, did she come in here wanting to work with us. The first thing that this agreement has to have is a cap on the amount of students. Otherwise, well, that's, that's, we, have we already have that. No, but I'm... No, but let, let, let's wait, well, one okay. second, Jordan. Sure. I know the school inside out. The reason they're building the brand new portion is to relieve what we already have. It's not for them to open I up know. the door in a new agreement, Craig, for them. I, can't, I have to agree with um, Josh. We have, we, have, we have an agreement. It's supposed to be this amount. The reason they're doing it is because we're over capacity. We're building this new over capacity in the individual classes. You're doubling up. You're doubling up classes. Well, right. It's not right. We're not right. right. I mean, there are kids 
I mean, in first grade, second grade, there's 30 kids with one teacher in a classroom. It's, it's out of control. I know. And the idea that we're just going to go to them with all due respect, Jordan, and sit with them and say to them, okay, well, you know, first of all, they were supposed to build this building a couple years ago. We raised that money many years ago. We were put on hold, and it's been almost three years that we've been talking about this building. And if they're going to use this building as a, well, we'll build the building if you let us have more people. Well, you know what? I agree with... I agree with Isaac, you know what, then don't build the building. And I'll just, with the people who raise the money for the basketball courts, we'll just build the basketball this, courts. Because it's about you, education this, and students. It's not about... This, this town was not built to house a major educational complex. Right. The, you know, this town was built around uh, you know, um, Bay Harbor Elementary School, which I'm sure when you went there had maybe 600 kids, 500 kids. Smaller. Yeah, huh? It was a lot smaller. It was a, it was a lot. It was a lot smaller. And then, okay, That's where the field was. You know, the, the you know the population got a little bit denser, but it didn't get that much denser. Where we have to like triple the size of the school. We can't handle it. Our our cops can't handle it. Traffic. Our you know the traffic can't handle it. We're not built for that. So that's why I'm 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 certainly not supportive of building a, yet an additional structure. You know over the basketball courts. I mean honestly, I would do anything in my power to stop the construction of this new building. Because the history is this. They had the little elementary school, and then they made it into a big elementary school. And then it got bigger, and they put portables on the, on, on the field. Okay. And we said, you know what? We don't want any more portables. Get rid of the portables. They say, fine, we're going to build a permanent structure where the portables were, and we promise there's not going to be any portables. And then at that time, they said, we'll have 1,200 kids. Well, you know, turn around, fast forward. We have 1,300, 1,360 kids there now. And... And, and growing. Yeah, we're Believe we're me. We're yeah. parking garage and threatening us to put a parking garage where the green field was and all well, that. Well, I mean, but listen, you have to, and, and I don't have the answer to this, but you have to make a determination as to how many students at, at that school are really entitled to be there because we're continuing to build housing in this community. And I know it's, I don't know what the extent of the population will increase kids. will be, but you're still going to be adding kids. And unless you, you don't want to split well, this district, uh, and you well, don't want to say some... Bob, maybe. You, you know what? Maybe. I'm maybe. saying yeah. our kids, if no, they harbor they kids. I'm saying they want to harbor kids. If you have to split the district, maybe the kids, right. you know, from 96th Street south will have to go to... Um, uh, Biscayne Elementary, yeah. which is at 88 percent capacity. By the way, 96th Street meaning 96th Street. I'm saying Remember, 96th Street, six, street splits us. No. Well, no. By, by, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, there was there was a time. You may not know this, but there was a time when I went to school. Middle school was separated by King Concourse. There was a time where half the town went to Nautilus, and the other town went no went to went to. Somewhere on the beach? Well, no, in North Miami. Uh, what's oh, North Miami Beach? What's the... Yeah, JFK. JFK? JFK? No. Um, um, right after. Right but I... Long but story one short, second. I'm not, what about I'm not in favor Surfside? of anything. No, no, let's Why see. isn't Daniel... Well, I think that we should reach out to Surfside and yeah. say to them, listen, because they... They have taken no participation, no, no help. Surfside doesn't have a dog in this fight. This they, is our this is our town. Well, you're we got to take the Surfside out of the school. Well, the other no, <laughs> I, I'm absolutely not saying right. that, but I'm saying there, the there, there, there's a so, there's a solution. There's a you know there's a solution that the school right. board can 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 that, that's disposable to the school redistrict. board. Redistrict. I mean, they, redistrict. They, can, they can change the. Well, district. we did that. Well, we did committee. There's, there's a boundary mm -hmm. committee. I would I would just ask. You know, I listen. I I have to deal with this. I mean, I know that we all have I, to. I, we all know, have to. Not, no, listen. I don't have any more power than no, anyone no, else on this council. No, no. Listen, I I, not, I can guarantee. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying I do. But I feel for this just like. You know, listen, and when everyone has their kids in the school, you know, believe me, uh, my, my oldest son had the last two years of a double classroom. It's not easy to go through kindergarten with a double classroom. It's, it's, I, 
I feel for any parent that has to go through a double classroom, it's not fair to anybody. Not parents, what, you know, a lot of parents, parents are like. Especially the dolphin game. No, but, well, I know. You know what? Let, yeah, what I'm know, saying is, let's dolphin. let's give yeah. it to. Yeah. I want to know the score. No, 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 no. But I'm guessing. So no, but but. <laughs> right, they're probably losing anyway. So. <laughs> no, but what what I'm saying is that that I don't think we lose anything to enforce it in January versus now if we actually have a meeting with them and put them on notice. You know, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I think um, Craig is right. I think all of us on the council, those who, who have an interest in this, should tell the manager what it is you want in this agreement. Because we could spend hours and hours and days and days discussing this. This isn't, if you don't think this is satisfactory, tell Craig or tell Ron what you want to see in this agreement, and then that'll give them some well, what something I would, to work with. What I would at least say, we can always litigate, we can always give a notice of default. Uh, and I want to make one stab at doing this peacefully, yeah, but the way we want it. And if I could have the input, I, I didn't meet at the last meeting, but I think that we're gonna have another come to the God meeting, uh, and I'd like to go over this contract and have the input from each of you of what you would want in the contract. Josh, if you can make this a contract with terms that would satisfy I, you or- I don't want a contract you, with them now. I, I mean, I'm not trying to cut you up, but I may say this. I think the way to do this is what I was saying last time, which is I think you, you put them on notice that you say, look, you can have a conversation. We're about to put you on notice of default. Uh, and we need to have a conversation. And if they want to come to some, if they want to try and come and propose some agreement or something afterwards, that will solve everything and that they will actually agree to with, with teeth, with the enforcement, we will see about it. But I have no, I, I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in putting forth another agreement when we have one perfectly good that's out there that they're in violation of. I think they have to be, they have to know that they've got a downside that if we don't come into something, we're just gonna enforce but, the other. And I have a problem just- And Josh, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, you know, you know, for example, I mean, I, I know some of us have relationships with board members. I know I have a relationship with a majority of the board members. You know, there's nine board members. I have relationships with at least five out of nine on a, on a good rapport. I would say, a, a, you know, a conversation with our, our board member and the superintendent should be customary since they're you know listen they're they're a government entity like us before we we Wait, nothing no, nothing no, stops no, us no, from no, doing no, that. No, no, that's what i'm it's saying i'm saying you have the conversation right. but but the idea of drafting a new agreement right now is useless L Absolutely. let's let's have let's if if we all can agree i'd like to have a a, a meeting with them with the manager and just express our frustration because again there's you know, no, that not, doesn't mean I, that, that, that doesn't mean, let me tell you something. I, I don't I, agree to that. Well, you know. I don't agree to that. I can tell you most board members don't let know let what goes on in Boy I mean, I, I don't care what well, relationship you have with the nine members of the school board. I've been on the school board audit committee yeah. and I've dealt with every one of them for the last four or five years. Yeah. And I know how the school board operates. That's why I can speak with such conviction because I've seen it all in front of me, okay? It's time, you know, the, the, what they understand is a legal letter. Mm -hmm. They understand black exactly. and white. You're in violation. Fix it. And if there's anything, you know, I, I, I agree with Josh. No new agreement until the old agreement is, 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 is back yeah. in order. So, and, and my number one thing is population, student population. If it's not 1,200, there's nothing to talk about. Okay. That's it. There's, you know, there's one thing, population. It, we agreed to 1,200, get it to 1,200. I don't care how you'd have to do it, yep. but just get it to 1,200, exactly. period. Exactly. And that's, there's, you know, any other agreement is meaningless mm -hmm. until we get there. I mean, have you spoken to our board member about this as far as the- I have. I mean, you know, he, he knows, believe me, he knows. Martin knows, he knows every single thing that goes on there and here. Yeah, yeah. And 100%. He knows everything and he, and he, let me tell you, thank God, he is great, he's effective, um, and I think he can, he can get us to where we need to be, I'm sure. Uh, you know, some way or another. So. Are we in agreement that we would like to send a letter? <coughs> yes, I agree, yeah. Yes. yes. So we're gonna put him on notice. Yeah, all right. Okay, so the concessions of the uh, town is that we would like to put the um, school board on notice that they are not in compliance with the um, agreement. agreement and that they have violated. And how much time does it give them to respond? 
30 days. Yeah, 30, 30 days. days. No, it's a 30-day cure period, but we can work with them. And I don't want them right. kicking students out this, this year, but... No, I know, but I'm really They're not kicking them out. I understand. They're they're not, they're not, they're what I'm saying is they're going to respond. Yeah. They're going to have to respond before our next meeting, so... Right. Well, that gives them 30 days you to know. respond. Yep. By January, they need to respond. They need to All right. uh, respond to us. That All gives right. them plenty of time. Well, I still want to speak to our school board member. Speak. And, and you can speak. Do whatever you want to speak. You can lobby, speak. Right. speak. Listen, I, you know, I, I need to do whatever you have to do, but we... No, I know, but I just, <laughs> I just want to make sure that, you know, and, and just for, again, for, for all of our sakes, you know, there, my understanding is that building has already gone out to bid. So are we also giving an opinion in regards to the building at this time? No, no we're we not. I have, uh, listen, no, I, and I, and I'm, Isaac, tell me if you feel otherwise, because I mean, you, you, I don't think any of us have a problem with the building getting built I, if we are 100% certain right. that, that it's not more students. That right. It's just our students. That's fine. Yeah. It's a nice new building. Right. Yeah. I think we're on. Right. There. It reduces the and class think, size and gives more, right. more facilities. And you know, you know, it's funny because I went by the site of where the basketball courts are, and I didn't realize that it's really in. It's inside the block. It's not on the the right. terrace. It's, right. it's right. inside. It's one right. like one lot inside. Right. So I mean that ha well, that will have much less of an impact on the community. And do you realize the people who donated that money? Still sitting. Child will be out of the school by the time that yeah. basketball yeah. court. Is but they, well, when well I, I, don't wanna, I can't care. opine on I that. Know, I can't comment I'm on that. Yeah. But um, all right. But yeah, I mean, I, I, so I'm not. I'm not so crazy against the building, but enroll. You know, the enrollment must be exactly 1,200 right. or less. I, 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 there's nothing else to talk about. Move to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. All right. We are adjourned at 9:47. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I killed it. Okay.